Dance into that. Chorus, hemiola, so the time signature stays the same, but the subdivisions um, change. Really good math. Really good math. Yeah, yeah that was great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our pleasure. <laughs> I'm Krista D, art teacher at U32. Heather Clark Warner, um, um, I do a lot of things here. Thank you very much. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? My agenda is so taken away. Right I just wanted to see if we're going to get an update on that student parent request that we had last time about chemistry, science. We can give, I can give a partial update. Yeah. You want to do that in your administrator's yeah. report? Yep. Yeah. I'll just do that. There. Okay. Does that work for you? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Anything else? Public comments? Just here to watch. <laughs> Listen. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping when we get to goals, you might chime in a little bit about the executive committee goals with Kari. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks. Um, so, motion to approve the minutes of April fourth. Second. In a second. Any comments? Oh, on the administrator's report, 4.3, it talked about considering changing graduation date in 2019 to the third Saturday of June. Don't we do Fridays? Fridays yeah. 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 You see what that is? Mm -hmm. That was the only thing I saw. <clears throat> oh, and then I noticed here, Scott, that you were going to draft a response to those students. Yes, I, I have not done that yet. Is it on your list? It is okay. absolutely on my list. <laughs> it's now on the top of I, my list. No, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed it here. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Um, the first discussion item was accessibility, and I think this came up because of a woman who came last month and was concerned about the accessibility of this building for people in wheelchairs um, and having trouble negotiating. It sounded like the parking lot and then some of the other areas. Um, and just kind of wanted us to have a discussion about whether we tried to be in a wheelchair and move around, where some of the problem areas are, what we could do about it. Um, I don't know anymore. So um, one of the concerns were um doors to bathrooms we, we tr could not adjust them so that they are they're pretty heavy um, and so the solution um, right now is to remove the doors to the boys bathrooms there's still privacy wall you know you don't just it's not so you mean the main door the main door so too. that a, a person in a wheelchair can't open it <coughs> independently right is that what you're saying yeah so okay. it may not have been able to be opened easily mm -hmm. um, and so we remove those doors um, some of the parking lot concerns were due to frost heaves. I mean, we just we had we had spaces where um, the when we started getting the melt, um, puddles were forming where puddles don't normally form, um, particularly in the crosswalk area. A lot of that had to do with a, a pretty big frost heave in that area. Now that it's gone, it drains properly. Um, so there, there's some of those issues. Our you know, our overall our sidewalks. You know, we we confront frost heaves every winter um, where the joints uh, pop up and so we try to address those we ground down some of the worst ones last summer um, so that we didn't have as big of an issue but it's still it's still an issue at times um, otherwise we are our building is ADA compliant we meet all of the necessary you know accessibility 
parameters that are out there. And, um, and in fact, when we redid the gym, that was one of our last big areas where the bleachers were not ADA accessible, uh, uh, compliant. And so those bleachers are now um, compliant with that. And so I, I, I know it can be difficult at times, but a lot of those things, uh, particularly parking lot, are more weather related than they are something that we can effectively <coughs> change. It's just so in that circumstance, is there a way to help a person in a wheelchair make it easier if the parking lot is full of snow? Or I mean, I guess we, our first priority is clearing the crosswalks and the handicapped spaces and salting those and providing as much as possible. We use the bus loop at times. Yeah, um, yeah, I've observed it. When, when kids are the kids come in, sometimes they're using the the knee knee extra support using the bus loop. And we typically have um, uh, paraprofessionals who help some of those students in in the mornings. They're out there yeah. just waiting yeah. to do that. So was this complaint based on the parking lot in the winter? I mean, it was hard for us, hard for me to ascertain. She, she mentioned bathroom, I remember that. Yeah. <coughs> Sounds uh, like we're, we're in the process of addressing that. We're, we're, we've been, it, yeah, we already have. Yeah. You've done that, okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I, I I can only speak to what you heard here because yeah. that's all I've yeah. heard as well. And will you circle mm -hmm. back around with her mm -hmm. and just sort of touch base and mm -hmm. say that we've talked about it and hear the things that have happened and you know I don't know find out if there are more. You know, it's hard for you to know if someone doesn't tell you. Correct. Um, I, I can just say that Amy Molina has worked with that family um, sure. as well to. Some of the other concerns. That I don't occur. care who circles around. I didn't. Yeah, I'm just, I, just so you know yeah. that, that yeah. this has been an ongoing um, commu communication with the family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might I sort of take advantage of the bathroom mention, just to um, to ask about the the e-cigarette issue? Uh, does this also go some way towards dealing with that? I would. Say probably not as much as we would like. Um, Do you want to tell us what that issue is? Or at least me? Um, <laughs> what, what I, I, I would sort of defer to Lucy and Shannon. Um, it's an epidemic. People, because there's not really smoke, people use like e-cigarettes and they vape in school areas which is kind of like harder to catch because the things look like little usbs so like and they're like not they're smokeless so it's kind of hard for adults to sort of see what they're doing and they just go into like bathrooms or like we actually have a study room in the library that's locked now because people were in there so mm. so it sounds like people are um brave enough to also feel like they can hide it and and it happened in classrooms as well. And so we, we talked to our teachers today, we showed them a couple examples of what the vapes or e-cigarettes might look like. Um, we also had sent out previously um, sort of a short PowerPoint presentation for teachers to use with their TA groups and discussing and reminding them that any of those still fall under our um, F7 policy because we, we have no way of knowing exactly what's in them. Um, and and what, are they, what are these things called? Um, vapes or jewels. Yeah. Jewel is the popular one right now because that's the one that looks like the USB. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, sorry, this, <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really showing how lame I am. Yeah, well, but, me too, obviously. Um, where did, uh, you just stick it in your mouth? It's like a cigarette, but it's just like a little like plastic thing. So you basically, it's like you have a plastic thing in your mouth and you, and you, and you inhale. <laughs> um, Scott, we'll bring back an example. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just we, to, we've, got, we've got a few. Okay. I, yeah, we can do that, but we're also, um, New Directions is going to do a parent night, just an information session about them because they're, they also have this concern for all of our schools. So they will be here the same night as the Arts Bash um, and do a presentation where they'll have samples of all the different kinds. So that's, that's not until May 25th, but we can, I can show you what some of them have looked like. Thanks. Um, yeah. Um, 
Uh, it would be just, but it doesn't have to be now. Um, I, I can wait. Uh, it's just, this is just new to me. We can bring up your parental IQ a little bit on this one, right? <laughs> You've got a long way to go. So, yeah, well, I, some of our teachers were shocked because they are. They're very small. They're, they're, you can hide them in your palm. And so you just kind of do a yeah. quick little. Yeah, you could. We just <coughs> and that's it. And you'll never notice it. And there's no odor or. It depends. There can be. It's usually pretty sweet smelling though. Yeah. They don't smell like cigarettes. But their little cartridges carry two packs worth of nicotine in them. What? It's not because they're tired. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the next challenge in parenting yeah, yeah, and uh, running a school. Does it. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. The <laughs> annual financial management questionnaire, which is on page so. seven. Kari was shocked to see it again. It's been a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a whole year. <laughs> Your life is flying by. <laughs> um, you know, we, we don't get any, this is something that we give to the auditors every year, so we're doing it in May with all six organizations, all seven organizations. Um, and it just doesn't change much because we do a great job around here, frankly. Um, and Lori does a great job, you know, taking care of all this. So. so my only question was, have you experienced a theft or an embezzlement during the last five years? We had a problem in buildings and grounds. Yep, was that, that was seven or eight years ago. Oh, <laughs> really? It wasn't while I was here, and I'm in year six. Now it's your turn to be shot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you remember that? I wasn't here. He was on the board. Okay, no. I you really said it. <laughs> wow. So, could, could, could you just say a couple words about the employee computer purchase program? The loan employee loan computer? You do. They can do that. They can have it deducted from their paycheck if they so choose to buy their own computer. Most don't do it anymore. It used to be something in them. Even to the early 2000s, it was when you had a computer with $3,000, and $3,000 meant more than it does today. People would do it, but now you can get you know, Chromebooks or right. under $300, so it's a little different. I just had a question. Yeah. The, uh, as you were mentioning, it looks really good, and Lori does, a, does a, an amazing job. Um, how much backup? she have. If anything were to, God forbid, were to <laughs> happen to her, to, or if she just decided someday to um, do something different. How so, much so can I put a plug in for policy governance? <clears throat> you would be requiring me to prove that every position has backups in policy governance. Can I do it now? So I will tell you that we have re we have all our procedures written for, it's one of the places where I feel really solid with our procedures. Um, they're really detailed and um, Lori was out last week and we ran out here. Well, she didn't come back to a mountain of work, so. I mean, there's some things that are individual, but very, very few things, including my position. I mean, one of the first things I did coming in and I do it till today is that, you know, Stephen was in France, ran the building. For a couple of days. Yeah, that's what we got to do around here. Yeah, great. Uh, that's. But I'm going to keep putting in that plug because I think it's you would ask for the proof. Yeah. And me saying it's not the proof. I I agree. <laughs> I think Matthew heard you too. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions about that? Okay. Flag policy. So last month. Did, the letter go? We, did Karen, did you get a copy? Yes, she did. We yeah. um, passed a motion. Can we, oh, can we get a copy? Oh, yeah. Can we get pass them out? Did you guys see this? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to see it. So, we'll see. Um, we passed a motion that talked about flying the Black Lives Matter flag, and we kind of left it. It was. We didn't specify how it was going to be flown or when it was going to be flown. It was sort of to have further discussion. And I was actually, when I reread re -read it in the notes, um, so here it is. Um, specifics to be determined. Um, and it was, we 
Stephen asked that the board provide time for some education and outreach to happen before the flag is flown. Um, whether a month is a reasonable amount of time to prepare. Um, we talked to the students about that and they weren't even sure about that. And then maybe the board would come up with a policy to look at. And we kind of charged Kari with <laughs> starting that process. Was told. In that exactly in that in the interim time we've also talked to a lawyer and he sent a letter to us today, which I haven't even had a chance to read, but it kind of outlines what you say. talked about last month with the different areas of, yeah. you know, what's okay. Yeah. It's going to get a little wild out there. Yeah. Keep our track going right now. So. What? <laughs> Just that we're okay. We're okay. What do you say? Huh, no. um, so I don't know if we want to just take a minute and read this. Everybody does and this that. is the Pietro Lynn is our school attorney. He's been doing work for us for several years. I've talked with a few other people about people that look at the lawyers in Vermont that really specialize in this. I haven't gotten a letter from them, but I have a conversation. School policy. More in uh, actually um, not in school policy, but more in civil rights and no. freedom of speech. Good. And they as a public entity, and I'm glad to get a letter from them, but we didn't get a long conversation, but they said we could talk more if we wanted to. They, okay. won't, give me, they won't give me legal advice that I can say here, but it wasn't far a stretch from here. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I missed the first part where you said you talked to somebody else. I, I have to, and I have to get more, but I had a quick conversation with them to say, so what are the particulars? And they said, well, if you want to retain me, we can do that. Um, but was it I outlined up? All, I I outlined where I was coming from, yeah. and they said, "Well, this is where you're going to want to start paying for my services." <laughs> and you stopped. <laughs> and I kind of stopped for a minute. Yeah. Because yeah. I wanted to see where we got to tonight, frankly. Right. There. I mean. Does anybody need more time to read this? Just. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Kari, do you have, do you want to talk about? Well, okay, so um, I did some research. Sorry. I couldn't find any examples of school policies relating to this. Certainly not uh, Montpelier, Burlington, or Brattleboro, which are the other schools that have yeah. made the same decision. Um, and I and I, I tried to look beyond flags. I, I mean, this is more of a. I guess it was a, I wasn't thinking free speech. I was thinking, at what point will the school advocate for something? Will yeah. it lend its support, um, um, political or not? And I, I just couldn't find anything. Um, and so the. I, I don't know if you want to go down this road, but I, I started thinking about well, you know, if we were going to create create our own policy along these lines, what questions would we? Ask ourselves, and and it really comes down to to me to uh, you know what is the criteria or the basis, and, and it would be I think things like is it 
are they are they activities um, that support our learning outcomes, our mission as a as an organization? And so, when you think about, we recently wrote a letter to um, state government about gun safety. I think that falls in that category. We're saying, okay, here's here's a movement that we want to support because it will help keep our students safe and we'll be able to better accomplish our mission. So that's one um, criteria. We could say that it's um, in keeping with our values, but we'd have to define those, and that could be pretty tricky, I, I would think, to, to measure against. And then the other thing I, I thought we'd, we would wonder is, is it something that's broadly supported by the community, and how would we know? And um, so these are, just, these are just questions in my mind more than anything. Um, but it, it does it does make me um, pause and think you know did we rush into this decision without really thinking through the implications and the precedent that we're setting. So, but I think we need to back up even more because now we have a legal letter that frames this as a free speech issue, and um, I think the last paragraph is is pretty clear. I, I you know. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but yeah. it's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, the lawyers are arguing against flying the Black Lives Matter flag. I think they're arguing against flying it on the flagpole. Yes. I mean, I think there are options to put it in different places in the school. Can I ask this? And I'm trying to stay out of this. I think this is something the board should do. But what's your goal by doing it? What are you trying to do? I think you should think. Yeah, you know, it's where you were going, Kari. Yeah. What are you trying to do? Questions. What are you, you trying to do? Yeah. Can I take a stab at that? Yep. Um, what we're trying to do is redress within the school, redress an imbalance that is being. pressed in upon us from the, uh, from the outside situation. So what we have is a, <clears throat> is a broader uh, set of circumstances in, in our society and our political life that create a sense of insecurity and um, a sense of being threatened among a certain population of our schools. And what we're trying to do is counter that by um, sort of allopathic therapy, by <coughs> giving something more in order to redress an imbalance. That was, I think, terribly expressed. But This is a, a, there are cases where what happens outside the school influences what happens inside the school. And at times like that, such as, you know, your example of the letter that we wrote, uh, the resolution that we adopted on um, the gun control bills, though that is a case where for the sake of the school, for the sake of the well-being of the students in the school, of all the students, we sometimes need to take a position on bigger picture political issues. I'd like to speak to it a little bit and pull the circle a little tighter. I think that that is an influence. I think that the larger societal circumstances are a piece of this. Um, but I also think we can be a little more direct and say we have students of color in this school who feel like they are not <laughs> who don't feel like they're of an, that, that they have an equal standing within the community. I think they've sat here and told us that that they they hear that message mm -hmm. um, and that in order to create 
an environment where all of our students know that we're here for all of them, we can put this flag up and it's a piece of sending that message that our community acknowledges this problem and wants to deal with it. And I'm not sure if I, it's really hard to tease this piece out. I'm not even sure it's political. I find that fascinating. I, there's a reaction to the Black Lives Matter flag that is that does feel political to me, but I don't know that I feel like the message of the flag itself is a political message. Yeah, that's a good point. And I would agree with you. I, I'm wrestling with what political means in this case. Um, for me, it's about equity and ensuring that all students are treated equally and have equal opportunities to succeed in this school. And when you go out bigger than this school historically, it's been very difficult for people of color to get equity in a lot of different places. And it, you know, it's <laughs> ebbed and flowed over the years. But we heard pretty loudly and clearly that they don't feel, I don't know what the right word is, comfortable or understood or in this, safe. what? Safe. Safe, safe. Yeah. In, <clears throat> in this environment. And I think my goal by saying that we support this is to start a process, start an understanding, create an environment that spreads safety for these kids and an understanding for everybody about what this all means, historically and right now, right here. Yeah, and I hope you don't mind. Can I be pedantic for a moment? Can you, Scott, can I just ask you? Yeah. Calm down the vocabulary a little bit. <laughs> it's hard for me to follow you. Pedantic okay, so is please. a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just not fair for folks who are watching this or are here that may not follow that. And yes. We want to make it accessible to everybody. I, I'm so sorry. I'm getting excited. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to keep it. Um, Keep it real. English. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about equity. We're talking about equity. You need to make sure everyone can keep. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I think there's a difference between po being political and being partisan. And what we don't uh, being partisan is not what I want us to be, and not what we should be. I think you know. Um, basically taking sides. However, being political in, in sort of the, the basic sense of, of the word, which is, you know, uh, I think engaged citizenship, um, involvement in a, in a community, that is profoundly what school is about. I mean, that's, it's in our student learning outcomes. Um, and I think that the way it's been handled, for example, um, I saw an email about the walkout today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this, is, this is what the school should be doing, is actually teaching and setting examples and providing opportunities for students to act politically, to be political members of their communities in a responsible way, which is exactly what we want. And this is, you know, and the students who came here <clears throat> at, at our last meeting and the meeting before, uh, I consider that to be absolutely part of the mission of this school, to, um, for them to do what they do, for us to listen to them, and for action of some kind to follow. That is totally within the province of what the school should be about. Was that okay, Bill? That was better. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's got, it, when I can't understand some of the vocabulary, I'm sure there's others. And it's just, that's one of the things I was talking with some of my 
just the other day with a piece that I was writing myself and um, remembering that I wasn't going to reach all parents because. Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Please, anytime. Can I say something too in regards to like how the group has progressed since then and the experience? That would be great. So um, the BLAM group, we went downstairs to the middle school and just to kind of address this idea of the politics of it too, um, which was a really powerful experience. We did an, we did exercises with the kids where we did kind of a disagree, strongly agree, and, and had these statements that these students are kind of existing with on a daily basis, if this is okay. And the middle school had really started to feel comfortable with talking about it. And then the idea of the, the flag came up, which the students had already spoken about as a group, and they asked the BLAM students what the flag meant to them. And what they said was that it means that they belong in the school and that they're being heard and that their voice matters, and that there's a chance that they're not gonna have to have these experiences anymore. Which I think is a strong experience. I mean, it's, I feel like the flag like it has been started as kind of a symbol of this by other schools. Whether that be the right symbol or like, however it is, it's a symbol that is really kind of bringing hope to these students. And then we also talked about the idea of it being political and the idea that, like, and I, and I challenge the students to think about how many movements that the African American community have that are aimed at moving forward become politicized. So how did this become a political statement? And I just ask them to think, like, is this actually political or is this just one more way of shutting things down? So I think that, just to add into your question of, is this a political statement? Can I say Floor? something? It, yeah, I, I read the newsletter from U32, and you know, one of my concerns was that I, I love the idea of applying the, 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 the Black Lives Matter, but to me what is most important is the conversations, right? So if, if the Black Lives Matter flag is going to fly, maybe it could be next February, once they have had a whole year of setting of, of being able to have those conversations within the school to really address that systematic racism that would bring other conversations that maybe that's even this one group could bring to sixth graders or fifth grade, you know, do a presentation at the elementary school so by the time they come to seventh grade, they, this has been talked about, that's just my take on it. And then it could be around, you know, as, as simple as, as a book and to me, it is not political. It, at all to me is just the you know the hate you give sort of comes back and whether you learn it through 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 this there's a lot of this racism conversation would bring a lot of other bias that are within us those conversations are what are the most important and then culminating that like Montpelier did you know, you know better you, you know through through a years through a year's work is what is most uh, in, in my mind, is what it would be most valuable for, for the, for the kids. Um, and one thing to respond to that, we have as a group, we have um, been moving forward. At the last meeting, like the way it was stated and the way I understood it, is is that they wanted it to be a catalyst, and that was kind of the we talked yeah. about that rather than yeah. a punctuation, as a, as a movement forward. And there is work that's being done to set up for a faculty meeting. The students are going to be having a full day um, field in, or in school field trip working with people to prepare themselves and to prepare themselves to speak to the faculty. People are going to work with the faculty as well. And then our real hope is to create, like, similar to the teen health week that they have, like, in, where there's like multiple experiences, multiple spaces for dialogue, multiple different things that end with kind of the celebration of the flag being raised on a Friday. I understand that there's question about, well, actually, like I was under the impression that it was absolutely happening this year. But I, I, but. So the motion says, <coughs> move to put the Black Lives, move to put up the Black Lives Matter flag with specifics to be determined. So I that's, that was that's where we left it. Yeah, I, 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 think agree, talking about I agree, Kari. I think our intent mm -hmm. was to get it up as soon as we could do it effectively. 
I think that's how the students heard it. But now we have new information. I mean, just as a practical matter, if, if you if you trust this council, they're saying we need to be prepared to provide the same access for other flags. So, and Carrie, one last thing from the DSBA, we just had a meeting related to this. So, Sue Siglowski from which is who is the the lawyer for the Vermont School Boards Association. Now, she just came back from the. National School Force Association, and they received a lot, that was a theme in that uh, conference, and they received a lot of information, so I would encourage you guys to reach out to her and see what information, because it's directly related to school boards. So see what information she, we haven't talked about it, it was just shared, they had just come back from the conference and are meeting at town until next Wednesday. So that would be a good place to, to start as a, you know, sort of compare Get a second opinion. Get a second opinion. I would also encourage you to talk to the ACLU in Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I'm not sure. I, I would want to probe to this opinion further. Voice. You there, wouldn't or you I, wouldn't? I would, because there are certain things about it. For example, as was, as uh, Carl was saying before, he didn't feel that the Black Lives Matter flag was necessarily political say, or, or sorry, partisan. Sorry, I want to say this is really important to me, but my daughter's about to run. Good priorities, Bill. That it's not a partisan flag. It's not. It's not a um, you know elect Bernie or Hillary or anything like that. <clears throat> Whereas a MAGA flag is, is a symbol of a party. It's a, really a very different thing. So <clears throat> I, 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 this seems a little bit muddled to me. Anyway, yes? I just want to say a couple things about this as some of them advocated at the last meeting for flying the flag. Um, one, one is that uh, you know, I, I spoke to someone in our community who used to work for the ACLU for many years about this. And, uh, Let me see who that was. I love, I love having him in town. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying his name, even though he gave me the okay to relay some of these thoughts. But, um, you know, as a civil, as a civil rights issue, or as, a, as a civil liberties issue, I should say, um, you know, the point was that, um, and I think the letter expresses this, that to, if you fly a flag, then you pretty much have to accommodate just about any request to fly a flag that might come along. If someone wants to fly the Confederate flag, for example, um, if someone wanted to fly a flag that said guns are people, um, you know, or all, all manner of different kinds of speech um, that might be displayed <coughs> by people, then you sort of open a, a Pandora's box um, in a way. And, you know, there, the, the, the test is rather test for what constitutes political speech is rather broad. Um, in his telling of it, it's whatever the majority in the community think is political, um, which complicates things a lot. Um, I think the, the irony is that, that uh, my, my perception, right or wrong, is that our communities would perceive this flag as political. The irony is that that's the very reason the flag needs to fly. I just wanted to add that to the conversation. I guess I would, I, I, would, I, I do want to say one more thing, though, um, about this. That, you know, as I think Carl said, you know, the students that came last time um, spoke about how they feel unsafe. They feel that their lives are not valued equally uh, with all students, basically on, on the basis of the color of their skin, um, that they are not treated the same the same opportunities. Um, and I think those statements are incredible, actually. They can be documented and substantiated. Um, and, and we talk a lot about, as board members and, and the administration is saying this quite a bit as well, that you know our, our goal of the school system is to ensure that every student has the <coughs> opportunity to succeed in our 
our school system, and especially that we are tr doing what we can to narrow the gap between uh, students that are at risk and that are not at risk. And I think that you know some of these students, because of their experiences, may be among uh, some of the most vulnerable or most at risk students that we see. So whether the flag flies or not, um, you know, it's important to me that 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 the U32, I'm saying this as a parent, that the U32 board wrestle with this question and determine what a viable course of action is on this topic. And as a board member, it's important to me that the, the SU boards as a whole do the same. The last thing I want to say, and I've got a few things to say apparently, <laughs> um, as usual, um, is that, uh, you know, it's interesting to me the two issues that have come up this evening about students at risk. Um, one involved an issue of physical accessibility to the building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was investigated appropriately and we've heard some concrete steps that are going to be taken, doors are going to be taken down, you know, we, we want to make sure that the student has the access that he needs to, um, you know, get access to education. What I'm hearing on this issue, the issue of the Black Lives, Ma Lives Matter flag is much more hazy and complex and sort of like the system is preventing us from doing things. And I think that's instructive in a couple of different ways. I think it, it illustrates how our society, our culture, maybe our political system in a way, is designed to resist this very kind of um, redress or this kind of action. Um, and I, I really would um, encourage you, thoughtful folks, um, to do your best not to get caught in, in those barriers. Um, not to let them stop you from doing something um, along the lines of what these kids were asking you to do. So well, I, I think the term that we could apply to it, while you talk about physical accessibility, it's the emotional accessibility that we have to school. Right? <coughs> and I mean, I think that that's a great way to think about that. And I, I think, you know, from the administration standpoint, the request of of give us some time is so that we could have the conversation. So I know that we have conversations tomorrow about this process and, and, and what it entails. The board has to wrestle with how are you going to deal with all groups that come and, and request of something, right? Where administration, our job is to answer the parent question. Um, and so we, I don't want to say we're caught in the middle, but your, your piece as a board to decide what you would like to do with the flag in no way absolves administration on dealing with the parental side and the student side of this and we have the thus the reason we ask for just a little bit of time so that we can begin to address these issues because you know we have a very um, new group of students I mean we, we we weren't providing them voice four months ago right and so so this voice is now there and they have advocates now too so there's other students who are now seeing the need and, and the desire to be involved in this as well. And so this is what we had asked for, right? So that we can, we can prepare our students in our community to, to deal with the issues. So, so it's easy to take a door off of a bathroom, honestly. <clears throat> it's extremely hard to deal with people's beliefs and values, and, um, and that's what we're having to do. And that will take a lot more time and, and a lot more energy. Yeah, and no, I, I agree. And I, what I'm interested in hearing, as a, again, as a parent, um, at some point, or as this evolves, is what is the plan? Yeah. What is the plan to, to address this? And I, one, of, the one other thing I forgot to add from our, our anonymous friend um, <laughs> was that his many years at the ACLU aside, and, and as strongly as he feels about civil liberties and the issues of, of balance and freedom of speech, he said if there was a way for this board to, to, to get around that and fly the flag, um, he thought that would be awesome because it's a small gesture that would be of such huge meaning um, to these students. Um, such a tiny thing, tiny step to take that would have such a huge impact on, on them. Um, so if we are prevented by law from, because of these ramifications from doing that, then I, I really would, I, I'm just advocating again as a parent that um, I'm asking the board to, to struggle this issue, I guess. Well, and I guess one of the things that, I, you know, what's our goal in flying the flag? I think our goal in this whole discussion 
is to make sure that you as an administration take this on and that we're not totally relying on a student group, that it's Correct. bigger than a student Correct. group, that they are, they're getting this going right now, but this is something that the administration and the teachers need to mm -hmm. figure out how it's going to work for everybody systemically, not just in the next two months, but for the next 10 years and beyond. Yeah. Because it, forever. Forever, because it's not going to yeah. go away. Um, and can I, like, and like speaking for the group, I guess my plea to you is, is like, and I know that you understand this, but the level of vulnerability that those students felt coming into the space mm -hmm. and asking for this and feeling like there was no way that they were going to get it and how few wins they have, that if this is taken away, it needs to be done in a way that still leaves them feeling powered because it's going to like, it's going to be a fall. Are they looking for the flag on that flagpole? Is that their goal? <coughs> their, their goal is the flag on that flagpole. And there has been discussion. Um, Jody came by and talked about how that, there was a discussion about a different poll and how it would be like for multiple voice and, and, and like everyone in the room deflated. May I float a thought? Hold oh, on, just a second. I'm sorry. I, heard, I just want to yeah, make sure I'm we sorry. hear from no, no. everybody. And if you don't have to talk, but I want to give you that chance. No, and I think that there, there just are so many layers. And when you read things that have happened in other places prior to the question of flying the Black Lives Matter, like for the example in, I don't know where it was, um, Iowa or somewhere where I, the first black student came to the school, and this was like two years ago. It's a, a white place like us. And the many students started putting Confederate flags in their cars and trucks. And then some started putting them in the lawn in the school. And that was seen as, which I totally support, infringing on the, because it produces such a negative response, and it does make people, it, it can be seen as a symbol of hatred, that it was, they were banned for the rest of the year. The school and the school board banned Confederate flags from school grounds for the rest of the year. And I think all of us around here would absolutely do that. So this is a little bit of a flip because, and, and there's a Supreme Court decision that you cannot punish the students so wearing black armbands to protest the Vietnam War. There would be no one punishing students <coughs> walking around with Black Lives Matters paraphernalia. Right? But would there be if it were seen as hatred? Like, it, this is a movement, and anything from the Black Lives Matter, when you read it, it's about diversity, inclusion. They list from every gender, from uh, every ability in life. I mean, it's just glorious. Um, but with emphasis on people who have those things and are black. And it's all about humanity, and it's a social movement, I think, more than political because it doesn't tie itself to one political group. Um, so I'm very supportive in the concept, but I'm also scared to death of groups that I do not approve of <laughs> wanting their flag to fly. And I can think of more of those than I can think of ones that I want to see the flag to fly. I'd like to speak to that. From, from Alan's comments right to there. I do not feel like the reason we're putting up this flag is because we specifically know we have a problem or we have a, 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 a segment of our population that does not feel safe and fully a part of, of what we do here. That's our reason for putting up this flag. It, it's a message that we are concerned about that and want to build an environment where everybody can thrive. If somebody comes to me and says, well, if they get to fly that, I should get to put up a Confederate flag. I would say to that person, how does the Confederate flag represent the values of our community? And, what, and they're not going to be able to convince me that it has any purpose up there to the furthering of our education and the safety and health and well-being of our students. So that's why that it's, an, it's an easy way to address that concern, is that, you know, it, goes I, to the it might be trickier if somebody came up with, if somebody came to us and asked to put up another flag that did feel like it went that way. You know, uh, 
I mean, an obvious example would be a rainbow yeah, flag. I was just going to say that. And I know. My own son would probably turn to me and say, hey, we run a rainbow flag, too? And I'd say, no, it's not. I would say to him, let's hold off on it. But, uh, <laughs> um, but I think the, tr the key is, does it for, the, will the flag represent the values of our community and this learning, and this learning community? Does it further our goals here? And I think most of the, uh, you know, most of those political tit for tat flags that somebody might throw at us aren't going to further that, and therefore, I'm not terribly, cons I'm not, con I'm not too terribly concerned that we can't, that we can't say no when the time comes. Yeah. Without and, and with and a, with a rationale that criteria. explains that this is not a question of, you know, freedom of, of us curtailing the freedom of speech of one partisan side over another. This is a question of this is a message about our learning community and what it means. So let's just take that rainbow flag as an example. <clears throat> if someone came and said, you know, and I imagine we might hear the same kind of messages from mm -hmm. those people representing that group that we just heard from the blame group. Would we be willing to fly that flag? It's a, it's kind of a social. It's equity. It's furthering our learning values. Everybody's accepted. I would say that probably if it was if if a population within our school came to us with that concern, we'd probably be we'd probably consider it. That said, nobody has. No. And from my knowledge of the community of people who might. I don't think they have the same concerns here. I think they feel safe in a way that even if it feels wonderful to them, it's a wonderful but perplexed thing for me that the world has changed that much in my my adult life. But I don't think that I don't think that population feels as nervous. I don't think they feel as disempowered. And that's why that question has so, Carly, is this going someplace where you can see a way out? <laughs> I think we need uh, more opinions, um, because legal opinions, because I assume that we could put some boundaries on this. this that's not how I read this. This says if you allow if the flagpole for speech, you have to allow, for one, you know, one kind of speech, you have to allow it for, for all. But that's it. That's where that decision I was reading from basically says that's not true. Right, yeah. but, we, don't, but we need to, yeah, we need to hear that from an expert. Yeah. And this also says political perspectives. Yeah. And I, you know, I wrote here, look up what political actually means. Because, I, you know, when I look at that Trump flag, the MAGA flag, it, to me that's clearly political. Yep. And I don't know if I have an accurate definition. Uh, I was well, well, and, and why political? Why is it limited to political? Partisan is fine. Yeah. Um, right. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, this this strikes me as typical lawyerly, you know, over cautiousness. That. Um, but anyway, uh, I more more opinions. That sounds like a good idea. But um, if I mean to sort of take the Confederate flag example and go really to the extreme. If someone came here asking to fly a Nazi flag, to fly what was that? A Nazi flag, uh -oh. for example, that that would never happen. Okay. But what we can offer to everybody is the opportunity to make their case to us. And we will decide on the basis of the criteria that we were talking about, Carl. Yeah. I look at this legality and I I come from everything we've heard so far about the legality, <clears throat> I, get, I get the feeling it's our flagpole as a community, and we're the people that our community sends here to decide what happens to it. And I'm, cont I'm not feeling dissuaded at all from putting up the flag as a catalyst to the conversation that we feel that our community needs to have. And. Yes, I expect somebody's going to come to us and say, well, can you put up an all, an all lives matter flag? And to that, I, I personally would probably say, yes, all lives matter, but not all lives need a flag and a conversation. Okay. Yeah. They don't fit yeah. into that. They, they, yeah, they, they, it's not, all lives don't have a problem in this school. Yeah. 
Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, I can hardly believe I have to be the one to sort of sound a note for the other side of this, but I, I do, I guess. Um, you know, the school is considered a public institution. And, um, you know, there actually was a Supreme Court case about who, wh what groups could use school facilities, mm -hmm. uh, whether any groups could be excluded from using school facilities. And the decision was that if anyone is allowed to use the school, then everyone has to be allowed to use the school. So freedom of speech is not a, it's not a parsable, you know, um, principle. You, you have to allow the speech of uh, the people whose views you hate, as well as the, the views that you yourself would support. Um, that's the essence of freedom of speech. And as a public institution funded by public taxpayer dollars, uh, the, the school is subject to um, that kind of thinking and that those kinds of legal questions. Um, so <clears throat> I would just say that um, as much as 98% of me wants to see the flag flying tomorrow, um, I think that it's the board's job to be deliberative about it and to try to, you know, get to the bottom of what the what the implications, the ramifications, and the risks really are of, of doing it. That being said, I, I also want to make the point that I think that that um, I think this this aligns with some of the other things that have been said is that the flag is not the only issue here. No, it's the it, catalyst for the big it has problem. Been, it has been presented and it has, it has taken on a life as the catalyst, as a, as a, as a powerful symbol of forward progress on addressing these issues. Um, and it's, un, it's unfortunate that if, you know, if legal and, and, um, issues would prevent it from flying, that it would be perceived as a failure or a loss or a setback. But acknowledging that that's the case, um, th that's why my sort of question is from my old catechism days, what then shall we do? Like what is, that's why I'm saying, what is the board prepared to do? What is the administration prepared to do? What are the steps that will be taken? Um, how are we going to address this as a real and present um, and um, undesirable state of affairs um, in our school? Um, and I think that that question has to be addressed regardless of what happens with the flag. Um, you said something when the um, seventh and eighth graders asked to blame students what the, or maybe you asked them what the flag means to them, and they said that their voice matters and that they belong here. But in the atrium are flags from many different countries, and the reason they're flying there is because there were exchange students who spent a year in this school where they felt like their voice mattered and they belonged here, and that's representative of them having kind of left their mark here. And I just think it's interesting that we already have a whole lot of flags in this building representing different groups of people. It may not be exactly the same reason, but they're there. And one more thing with just pushing of what we, I'm very conflicted here, what we can establish as criteria, because that's what I keep coming back to, is that when you the the case that we were talking about the tinker tinker test evidently yeah so the cases that have had issues since then um, they basically say that you can take away the student's right to free speech if what they're doing is plainly offensive or disruptive that's, that's where that's if it's yeah. something yeah. it's mm -hmm. right in here right. Right. so yeah. most yeah. of the ones we're coming up with if we were requested by a group, some of the examples we've given, I think we would have enough evidence to say that is disruptive, that is intended to harm, not bring together. Um, I, I think we could draft our criteria. And Kari, I think you started with the three criteria that we keep coming back to. Yeah. You know, it has to support our learning outcomes, it has to keep with the values of the school, um, and I would say it has to ensure that students feel safe here. You know, something around the safety and comfort. More than comfort. Maybe safety is the right word. I'm not quite sure what it is. 
And I don't know if our policy has to be supported by the community. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know, we're the that 32 year, school board. So I can answer that for you. No, you have the power to enact policies whether they're supported or not. Um, I want to go back to where I believe the bigger discussion is not about the flag. That's why I asked you what you're trying to do as a board. Well, I, and I think we're pretty clear about what we're trying to do as a board. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I have heard that thread of a message. Because then, then I would ask for monitoring of that, that gets put in place and that the community, that that sense because that's, and, and, and I'm not debating the flag one way or another with that. I just think if that's what you're trying to do, then as a board, as a governance system, you should be saying to me and to Stephen, okay, show us proof that that's happening. Well, I, and I think that's where we're going with what is the administration going to do? What's the plan beyond next week, beyond next month, beyond even next February? You know, if that's where we go with this, I don't know where we're going. But what is the systemic change and program that we can bring to the school to ensure safety and comfort for all our students, especially those of color. Because that seems to be right now. And, and I agree that I believe the conversations are really important and, and that they're happening. Like already, regardless, they're happening. And that's one of the things I implore that we don't wait till February and make it this trivialized month that we're going to talk about it. Like, and like have that be like this one time where we're going to celebrate it. Like it needs to be throughout the year. It needs to start now. And not necessarily talking about the flag because I agree. This is, I don't think this is much to do with the flag at all. It is about mm -hmm. these students. It's about the school. It is about the community hearing so much more. But I know it is a symbolic, just like it's a, it is the symbol of it all. That has like, however, become really gain momentum in Vermont as like being the symbol that it's being presented at schools. And something that the students have asked for and fought for. And I just like, however this goes, like somehow like we have to make sure they still have that like win and the feel of empowerment and the feeling of being ready to lead the school into these, these conversations and these moments. Brene Brown's book, she says exactly after interviewing a bunch of middle school students what you just said, it was just amazing, that there, she asked what the difference was between fitting in and belonging, because her whole book's about true belonging. And this helps these students feel like they belong, which means you're accepted for who you are and you're okay where you are, whereas fitting in is pretending to be like everybody else, which is very different. Jen, do you have anything? Any thoughts? I mean, I think we've heard from the students on this. I would say, I think, when the decision was made last meeting, yeah, um, there was some students who, like, they talked to me and they said, like, this is, this was sort of sudden. They didn't see it coming, and they didn't know if the process had, like, gone as far as it needed to go. They, there were still a lot of questions, I would say. And so I think the student body right now is just looking for something definitive and they're looking for some answers right so now. So definitive when the flag's going to go up? Yeah, is like that when the flag about? is going to go up. Where is um, it going to go? Where How long is it going to right. stay? Okay. There's a lot of confusion right now because everybody knew it was going up and then they were confused about how, like, when that's going to happen. And, and why? And why it's going to happen. Exactly. I have a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> I was about to do one, but I, I go think, ahead. I think we should move forward on, on a couple different fronts over the next month. One is we should do a little more research, legal, get at least one other opinion, whether it's ACLU or your okay. other source. Um, or maybe both of them. Or both. You know, I, know. I don't know if your Worcester case. friend could. No, I think we should well, go yeah. right to the ACLU. Go right to the ACLU. Yeah. Um, we so, so that we, to, to understand the, the flag question specifically. But then I also think that we should craft a statement about what we believe, why, and, and not about flags, but about diversity and inclusion. inclusion. Yeah. Um, and whether that becomes a resolution or a policy or just a public statement, that's going to serve us in, in uh, different ways, I think. Um, we can use it to communicate with the community. Um, we can 
provide, give it to the administration to create action plans with. Um, but it's going to take us a little while to, to craft that. And I would volunteer Scott and myself to work on that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Try to bring the draft back next month. We're, we're meeting next month, are we? <coughs> After June the full 6th. board meet, it's the beginning of the June. But, yeah. Um, but I'm just worried a little bit about the timing that the mm -hmm. school year is going to end. Yeah. Do, and this is just sort of, do they have a vision of what's going to happen? A, a, like a dream true. of what's going to happen? Yeah, the vision is, I mean, they're preparing. Like, they're prepared to, like, begin by speaking to the faculty. I mean, this started before the idea of the flag. The vision that they really had was to like start having these group discussions with all the students so everyone could hear what their experiences are. So their hope is to begin by talking with the faculty and we're trying to set it up so that they can kind of be double teamed into small groups and have half the faculty working with it to like make it so that it's balanced out but working with Shelly who's like this amazing woman and works in race. and. Um, and then the dream is really to have a week-long experience that's like a celebration. And is the dream to have that before the end of school? The dream is to have that before the end of school. Okay. And I'll be honest, like we've looked at a calendar, and, and the one week that works really well is May 28th, um, which is like the day after Memorial Day. So it would be a four-day week. Four but it's, like, it's the only one that hits before graduation. The like the yeah. seniors are gone. It's the one that's like, I mean, it's... It moves right up. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I understand. Uh, um, and, and would their vision then be to put the flag up at the end of that week? Like on the Friday. Okay. I just, I'm, it helps me to have. And I think, am I correct that some of the thinking behind how to structure that week has been sort of drawn from the teen health awareness yeah. Yeah. that Megan did? Yeah. Where there can be I think that's terrific. I think it's terrific to draw modeling on that. Um, but I guess I'm a little concerned. That, you know, Megan's a very competent professional educator who spent eight months developing that, and I don't think she did. No, she yeah, did. I think no. she put that. That's okay. Yeah. We can we can we can <laughs> read about the time. We about the time frame. <laughs> no offense to Megan, right? In this statement, but we can do it in a, in that amount of time. You think you can do it? Then, I I believe wholly that we can. Do it. We've Carl, learned a lot yeah. in how to do these things this year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not going to be. The only the time you ever do this. Right. This is the first of many. Yeah. Is how I see that. Yeah. And if you learn a lot from it, that's great. Yeah. Right. And if it's, it's not okay perfect, and for things to hurt and be bumpy along the way, yeah. like yeah. that's part yeah. of the process. Part of the process. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so there's a third thing, which is I think we need an interim communication to the students specifically about what's going on here. I mean, Chan's saying, and also specifically to the Blam Group. Um, that says we need more time. We've got new information. We need more time. We are fully supportive of X, Y, and Z, but we need to, we need to communicate. And is the vision that flag would stay up for the rest of the year? Have they gone I think that, that far? The vision. So, and like, so like, can you talk about the flags hanging inside? I mean, I think that the idea is not that the flags hanging the whole time outside, right. but to hang outside until the end of the year. And then, and then maybe it is the like month of February. I'm not, I, I, I will admit, as a personal thing, like I'm not a lover of like this idea of like the month of February being this like one Yeah, no, I, one I, I get time. that. You know, I just, yeah. But like, and I can totally appreciate the idea of it joining these other flags. I don't think that joining the other flags, I think that would be a minimizing starting point. But it's I think. It's the second step. But it might yeah, be, it, it might be to step. keep that message there alive. Yeah. Yes, and maybe it comes back out at, during February or however that works. Or after a week, another week of right. whatever. Or like, yeah, doing. like if we're doing this once each, like if we're doing these like things, like that's like yeah. to yeah. signify. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I am not comfortable authorizing find the flag before we do. No, I, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm sort of probing because <laughs> the timing doesn't work for our to do this yeah. before. Yeah. And when, when yeah. I said yeah. flying yeah. heaven, yeah. we are in February, oh, yeah. you know, because I'm going to month, but I've meant like through the year, like, mm. but I didn't understand as a catalyst. Mm -hmm. I was more like, you know. Like so we do, do have, combination. we do yeah. have our um, board retreat on so May 23rd. So I'm going to suggest very strongly because this is a passionate, um, there's passion and there's interest in this topic. If you were going to discuss that, I would suggest you be here and not be in your okay. retreat. 
then I don't want to. Not, not yeah. that it might be important you're right. enough to you're you're say, absolutely right about to that. say yeah. put these retreat aside. This is more important. We want to have a meeting on that night here at U32. But the public you're needs absolutely to be part right of that. About it's that. an open meeting, yeah. even though it's yeah. a retreat, but yeah. we try to. You're totally yeah. right about that. So I, I mean, I'd actually want you to think more than just a few minutes about maybe the retreat gets set aside. If this is that important to you as a board, and you might want to think about it and come back to it tonight. Is it that important that we want to set the, our retreat aside and come back on the 23rd and do that work in a meeting here? I'm open to that. We're going to have the, the um, board goal conversation in a little bit, at least on yep. the SU board yep. goals. And I feel like this year the board goals, some of them are kind of coming from the yes. executive we're, committee anyway. We're being asked to adopt these three. And we don't usually do many more than three, right. maybe four. Yeah. Are people okay with that? I kind of like that too. So that would be here? That would be normal, here, normal six yeah. o'clock. Six o'clock, okay. and that would probably be the only thing on our agenda. Uh, you and I can work on the agenda. Yep. Let's get that so that there. speeds up our timeline in terms of getting legal opinions and it's got my I think that, I think those. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and a student team. statement. A, a statement to the students explaining. Yeah, well, let's see. What are, what are, what are like? Is it, it's what's three weeks. Meeting? May twenty third. Three weeks. So that's three weeks. We, we could wait till after that meeting. I think we should. I think. We'll I think it all. It may be that it's the same statement. That. Depending on what. Or. Well. Or it. People it want to know specifically about the flag. I think. Right, so. but we could start with this kind of philosophical statement about diversity inclusion and then more specifically what it's going to look like with the flag. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so the goal of that meeting will be to have a statement and then to try and communicate that something to the school and the students and try and do both of those things. Okay. Okay. And if they, I know that you know it's it's a lot for them to come, but if they want no, to I come, think then, want to then May twenty third. Okay. Yeah. Do you mind if I open the window back up? It seems yeah, yeah. 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 No, you can just do that. You don't have to ask my permission to open the window. Let me go. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for all your opinions, and I appreciate the respect people give each other and the quality of the con conversation. Do you want to do your report? I realized when Lucy walked out that I forgot to ask you guys, and I really I feel badly about that. No, that's fine. Yeah, I can do the report. Okay, now. let's. So we're going to skip down to reports to the board, student, and give you a chance to do that. And then if you need to go home, we can. All right. So you might have other things you need to do. So we're just coming back from April break, right? It's been like a week, um, and yeah, we're. Spring sports are obviously in the thick of it now, full swing, um, and we're sort of in the, the final countdown, I would say. People are starting to feel that with the AP tests coming up next week and the week after, and then I'll be all downhill from there. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, like we talked about a little bit before, there was a pro-Second Amendment walkout today, um, and that was something that students collaborated with the administration on. Um, and so it was sort of, it was handled, um, I don't think it had as much, uh, like not as many people knew about it as the walkout that happened in March, but it definitely, um, I think went pretty smoothly. Uh, WCAX, like you guys got the email, um, came and yeah, um, and then. Oh, just out of curiosity, I, I pulled up just as it was ending. I'm curious how many people <clears throat> were out there. I don't think. About 50. About 50? Yeah. And all student, when you say 50, it's 50 yes. students. Yeah. 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 We did embarrassing protocols. You can, Joy, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but from what Stephen and I talked about before, I got here because I got here at the end. Very same protocols as when we support students before and having their voices. Yeah, we, had, we also had a shorter time frame of knowing that it was going to happen. So there was less opportunity to really make sure that everything was in place, but it went really well. Right. Okay. And did people speak? Um, no. They, that, they didn't have that kind of planning. Um, the, it was floated to us yesterday. <laughs> um, 
So they didn't they didn't really pull together in that way, but students did speak to WCAX, so a couple of students got their opinions out. Um, mostly they just talked to each other. Um, there was a popular shirt today that uh, several of the students were wearing um, that expressed that. Something about, I'm not remembering it, but regarding gun control, is it's not about the gun, it's about the control, I think is what it said. Um, so several students had that shirt on, and I think it's a close-up on part of the WCAX. I saw the teaser, haven't seen the actual. So was it on the 6 o'clock news? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, so we all, so <laughs> we all missed it? We all missed it. So we'll have to watch the replays. Yeah. Okay. It, yes, um, and then otherwise, there's just, um, I think, like we already talked about it, but the Black Lives Matter debate is sort of happening among students. It took a little while for people to realize, I don't think people knew after the decision ma was made, like not everybody was fully aware, um, but in the last couple of weeks, people have like, you know, started to figure it out, and so now the dialogue has sort of started to happen, so... I think it's good that the you know the next meeting is going to happen and people will be able to come and sort of hear and be aware and be a part of the conversation. Um, and then otherwise, just fun stuff happening. There's new fun callbacks on Friday, mm -hmm. which is a new thing. Before we've just had club callbacks and teacher callbacks, but these are opportunities for kids to try some opportunities that are run by teachers that are maybe something they wouldn't try regularly. So Can you give us an example? I think there's a yoga one. Um, there's one that's like, find your spot in the woods. Knitting. Knitting? Yeah. Can't jam, yeah, I saw that. that one. Yeah, it's I, I was thinking it's coming. It's a frisbee game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Self-defense. Self-defense is one, which I think is from, that's. It was a Teen Health Week thing, and people yep, liked got it, carried so over because it was very popular. Back. There's a couple that got carried over from yeah. the Health Week. So, does everybody do fun callback on Friday, or just no? It's, no, there's, it's an there's option just like options other options on Friday. So, there are some kids who are still gonna go do, do their, their math and science. Yeah, they go do their normal thing with other teachers. And it's great. Yeah, there's just yeah. new opportunities. Yeah, and that's what we got for right now. And I have a question for you. Okay. Do you know what you're doing next year? <laughs> yep, yeah, I'll be at UVM next year. Not so far away. Good yeah. Idea. And you're happy with that? Yes. They made Great. me a good deal, and I'll be in the Honors College, so. Terrific. Nice. That's good Thank for you. Me. Congratulations. <clears throat> and you're welcome to stay, but I know you have I might slip out with it. Okay. Thanks, Shannon. You don't have very many more meetings with us. I know. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to go back up to the discussion agenda. Unpacking objective three in the implementation plan was high quality instruction and intervention. This is part of our goals was to go through the intervention, the inter, no, implementation plan, thank you, um, kind of systematically and hear what those three different parts were. And we did the second part last time. And Stephen, thank you, because I kind of threw this one on you. No it was problem. on that calendar, though. No problem. So, so just like the last one, I kind of tried to structure it a little bit the same. So this is drawn from our um, our implementation report that we have, and um, and these are the the uh, strategies are in the um, left hand column of our table uh, for strategic objective number three, which is high quality instruction and interventions. Is what our our third um, uh, strategic objective is, and. Um, and this is really around what occurs in the classroom, um, really facilitated by our teachers, right? So that, uh, or I would say not just classroom, but any learning space, because you'll see the flexible pathways are a part of it. And so, um, just give you a chance to, to glance at these, and then I'll say a few words about it.
can I ask for acronym? Yes, you can. I'm sorry. Some, I some of them are at the top. If I, you, I thought. Or can be teased out at the top. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, which ones? Pilot. Well, pilot is our independent learning uh, class. So P is for? I don't know. No, it's I don't actually, think it's, 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 it's pilot. for anything. It's just, oh, it's, just it's, called a, it's called the pilot program. Oh, so they, it was they a program that they piloted own. years ago, and they kept the name. It's okay. kind of like we're Union <laughs> School <laughs> District number 32. We never named ourselves. <laughs> oh, okay. Because so, all capitals implies but an acronym. Okay. It does, which is even weirder. Okay. <laughs> and branching out? Branching out is a more structured program of independent learning. So, so there are actually various levels. So pilot program is where students are working much more independently with a teacher advisor. Branching out is typically focused around a single topic um, okay. of study. So usually like a single project that they work on. Okay. Um, they still have uh, faculty advisors, uh, and some have um, outside advisors as well. And come check out their displays next Wednesday night. Yes. Yeah, we're going to put in a plug for that. Oh. So the Mentor Appreciation mentor Night appreciation. is next Wednesday night here at the school at 6 o'clock. 6 or 5? 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. So <laughs> one of those two. 5.30. I'm checking the newsletter right now. May 9th. 5.30. 5.30. And, um, and you'll get to see some of the projects that kids worked on. Yeah and meet some of their mentors, the people in the community that have supported them. Like Floor. Floor is one of ours. <laughs> in many different places. So I'll just CBL? Community-based Community based based learning, learning okay. which is more of an internship type program where the students are um, usually engaged in yeah. some kind of business work um, with either a company or an individual. Sorry, I tried to catch them. Before you start, this is an incredibly loaded sentence. At U32, our teachers must be adept at advisory, restorative practice, project-based learning, Good. instructional practice, proficiency-based learning, and classrooms must be trauma-transformed. That's an incredible <laughs> sentence. <laughs> you think so? Because that's what we're interviewing every one of our new candidates I, on. That's incredible. It's amazing you're hiring anyone. <laughs> <laughs> What, what is trauma transformed? So it is an effort by our staff to become more aware of how trauma affects students as they come into the classroom. And it's, and it's to make your classroom um, more neutral or positive um, for students so that you don't really re-engage them in their trauma. So, um, so a lot of our, it's early discussions, so we're just starting our training on this. Um, but it's how to, um, help students who may or may not be ready for learning when they enter the classroom because of what goes on in their life outside of the classroom and how to address that and how to create a more welcoming environment for them. And this is new? So the concept is not new, but our training around it has just started this year in depth. Because there's mm -hmm. more and more time. Because we need to be better equipped to uh, work with all students in our classroom. Yeah. So, so the, my whole presentation, uh, you know, what, what it is, is around those five things. Yeah. So when you, when you see those five things right there, there is no one in our building who is fully adept at all five of these things. This is, we are in the process of learning and, and using these things um, in our classroom as, as the case may be. But what we do, um, what we have been asking of our new hires that you'll see a list of in a little while, um, is we ask them of these five areas. These are the things that we as a staff believe in and are working on um, and our own growth in this. And which area do you feel strongest and which area do you have the most room for, uh, for growth? Um, but we are asking that same question of ourselves. Like this is, there is no expectation right now that any of our staff are experts at all of this. But I will say that um, our training, our work, um, the conversations that we have as staff fall into these five categories. These, these are what make great teachers in our school. I want to add a little bit onto your trauma transform to give a yeah, little yeah. bit more depth because I think we could add a little bit more there. Yeah. Um, you would, in the previous year, and I'm sure Floor, you, you've heard this, is there's trauma informed and yeah. there's a difference. And what Stephen just described to you was really trauma informed. Right. Trauma transformed is another level that we're working with. We've been working with, had a partnership with Dave Melnick and the SU 
for and for U thirty two, this is the first year of really working on it. In other first schools, couple months, yeah. It, yeah, first couple months. In the, in other schools in the SU, it's been multiple year relationship. With the, and it's really saying not just are you trauma informed. Do you know how to work with the kids? And can you make a climate in your classroom so that there's more acceptance and that you're not doing something to maybe exacerbate the trauma. It's are you changing your, not only how you work with your kids, but how you work as adults with each other? Are you looking out for each other as adults? And how are you changing your practices and your operations within the school system that would tell you that you're actually becoming trauma transformed? And that's, it's a new, it, as many things in education, it seems like, well, are you just renaming it? And it's not. It's not just what trauma informed is. It's taking, it's taking another level to it, and really looking at how do we work that way as adults, and how do we, um, <coughs> how do we change some of our practices? Not just that we're informed about what kids need, but how do we change our practices not only with the students but with each other? And so Dave worked with us as a leadership team for a little while, and um, he's going to be coming back and working with us. He's worked, he was here in the winter working with all, everyone from the SU. And, he was, and he's got a he cadre of And he was here just a few hours ago yeah. working with us. Yeah, a cadre of 25 or so. It's right. about that size. That have been uh, teachers that are going to be our teacher leaders in trauma work. So we're building our own leadership from within, as we do with most PD around here. Can I just ask, uh, are the students who are being... Um, Accommodated in this way, are, are they already captured within the special education population, it, or I want to, so I want to tell you that m most trauma <coughs> isn't necessarily a special education. Piece. <coughs> wow, trauma it has trauma. It does not have a demographic pattern. Trauma doesn't have a learning style <coughs> pattern. And this is if you haven't seen, um, I'm losing the title. Thank thing. you, resilience, which um, you know we talk about different showings for. It is something that it really the 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 literature that that comes from there and from other places that if you've heard, um, I mean it's been prevalent in my work as an educator and it's becoming less prevalent. You hear about IQ, and IQ is not holding up to rigor anymore, mm. um, and that's because you can you can you can grow a student's you can actually change students' DNA. And you can change people's DNA through their experiences. And that's something that's getting more and more prevalent in the work that's happening. For good or bad. For good or bad. You're right. So if you if kids, if you can take students who have either had, whether it's um, life experiences that are traumatic or poor education, you can turn that around with the right experiences, i.e. the right environment that you can, you can build around them to support for their growth. Uh, Eric Jensen out of Dartmouth, is a big researcher on brain research in this. This has been proven through brain research and through DNA research. Um, that you can actually, um, you can increase a student's, a student's IQ quite a bit. And you, you know, so the IQ testing, all that is going, is becoming old science for us. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, Dave was here when he was working with the whole staff for that half day, talking about how the brain chemistry changes when you're in trauma. Yeah. Or when you're under stress, I mean, just different, and uh, he does a very good job of connecting that for people. And when we say trauma, when we talk about trauma, we mean primarily emotional trauma, right? Not physical trauma, although there might be also that. I would say any, all. Everything. Any and all. All. Uh -huh. all. Yeah. yeah, and so when we look at the strategic objective, high-quality instruction interventions at U32, we really have brought it down to these areas. And when you look at the strategies, these are more specific ways that we reach into um, try to make those five things stronger, right? So, so when you look at um, consistent communication, that's getting a common vocabulary for us. That's the training that we undergo with restorative practice. That's the trainings that we undergo for project-based and proficiency-based learning. You know, so these are, um, so when you look at what are we doing, right, so those are the strategies, um, but what are we actually doing is we're training our teachers, right, and, and that's what the focus is. And, and so just to give you an example, if you were a new teacher in our school next year and on our ninth grade or 10th grade team, so this is just to be specific, um, 
you would start in August, on August 8th, 9th, and 10th, you will go through three days of project-based learning training. You'll come back the next Monday, um, and you will do two days of restorative practice training. You will then do three days of new teacher orientation where we will introduce you to proficiency-based learning and advisory um, during that time. And then you will have a full week of in-service with our school. So the investment that we make in our teachers now is huge. Like this is not just simply the old days of show up and teach, you know, with a couple of days of here's the book. And, um, and then the training throughout our year, you know, is to reinforce these and to provide additional um, training, to provide additional structure for teachers um, to see other examples. And so when we talk about how we commit our resources of training um, and development of our teachers, we invest a great deal in our teachers um, right now. And it's necessary investment. I mean, it's, it's the payoffs are huge. Our middle school, uh, I feel this year, took a huge step forward because they did the project-based learning training this last summer. This summer, we'll have our ninth and 10th grade and a few other teachers. And so, you know, it's just, these are all things that we would love for everybody to be adept tomorrow. This is the long-term, continuous growth that we have to have as, as a school. But we have a really good focus on what it takes right now. I mean, it's no secret what you need to do to be a good teacher at U32 right now. Um, and when we think that that's a really good mark for us. The research is really clear. You need a, at least 100 hours of professional development spread over the year to can really grow as a teacher. And many, many systems don't have that. And as we talked in the executive committee, we're trying to find other ways. We need more of that, if not less. The 100 to me is even not enough. Um, of what we have. So, and I would point out the instructional coaching for staff, like while it's only got one little tiny line there for progress, um, we're starting to have conversations about how we use the uh, role of master teacher to be instructional coach. Could you speak to us about what's the, the designation master teacher? So a master teacher within our supervision and evaluation document is pretty much our highest level. So those are teachers who are Proficient in our, remember we use the Danielson framework is what we use to evaluate our teachers on. Um, and so our master teachers are those who have reached higher levels of performance based upon our observations of them on that scale. And, um, and so they've got to be proficient in at least, well they have to be all. proficient in all, but it, uh, distinguished right, in at least one. The fourth one. Um, and so um, we have 29. 29. issue. Across the SU, 29 teachers that we've already designated. It was 14 here. 14. I, I'm trying to remember from Monday when we had the I know, that's what I'm trying to <laughs> like, do. okay, I don't have that right here with me. I actually left so, it on the desk so, tonight. Yeah, so okay, approximately half. Yeah. Right, approximately half of our teachers, um, our uh, master teachers are here at U32. And we want to um, we want to provide them with new opportunities for growth because we, we want them to be more teacher leader role, which is what master teacher is around. So when you talk about various levels, we've talked about this in the past, of, of roles that teachers can take within our supervisory union. This is one of those um, roles that they can do. And, um, and we've just, we just started the conversation this yeah. week about what, that's, what that is really going to look like long term. And that, I mean, that's the career ladder piece that you've talked yeah. about, Scott. And yeah. um, if you want to know more about that, be glad to. I just there's a lot of work that I'm doing outside of my doctorate that's in this same area that the, the most powerful thing you can do to improve the schools and improve is pro provide support to the staff. That's great. They're the ones doing the work. Right. Yeah, so the ones, <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that so, are kids. So um, so were there any other questions around this? Well I just want to make an observation. The column here strategies matches up with the strategies that are written oh, right yeah. in yeah, the yeah, implementation yeah. plan. Oh, yeah. I don't know, if, you know, not looking at the implementation yeah, plan, you yeah. might not make that connection. So but those, so then what Stephen has done is kind of addressed each area. So one of the things I'll make a, a, sh a shameless plea for is, you know, there's a lot in here. It just takes a few times. Just what Stephen talked to you about that is right here on a sidebar. Okay, for the teacher evaluation system. So. Having that and really, we this, this gets pulled out all the time at leadership team meetings. 
That's why mine's dog. But so so what's so important about this though is that it keeps us focused. Right? And and so when we talk about these strategic objectives, it keeps us focused, right? So you should you can ask us questions about what are you doing, right? To to make sure that this is happening. And we should be able to point to training or um, or work that is being done uh, to meet these um, objectives and these strategies are ways to do it. And, um, and so we will talk actually a little in just a few minutes about the multi-tiered system of support a little bit more. So we have that um, as well. So. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 All right. Update on the continuous improvement plan. There it goes. Am I going to have to move? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So we are um, we're actually trying out new lights. Um, they're in Berlin, but for they're us they're in Berlin. They're in Rummy and they're in Montpelier. Yeah, but we're trying them out. <laughs> um, but they, they'll go dim, um, like eight, you know, ten percent at uh, after like five minutes of no activity, right? Then they go off after ten. Minutes. Yeah. 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 Four minutes. All right, we ready. All right, so this is just a quick, um, there's not that many slides to this, but we're going to just show you a little bit of data uh, from this year uh, so that you can get an idea of what's going on. We're going to talk just so briefly about our, in, our MTSS system. Um, <coughs> what does our data look like? What's working well? What do we need to investigate further? And what support do we need from the board? And so this is based upon our data from this year for students, but I'll also um, I'll also talk about uh, carry some data that happened last year as well, so you can hear about the product works. So this is one of the things that was in that part of our uh, our, our implementation plan, which is a multi-tiered system of support. Um, so what this is, it, it, there's a lot of different ways this is talked about across the country, but in Vermont we call it an MTSS system. Um, and it's really the way that we assess, instruct, and intervene in student um, learning. And so um, you see down there at the bottom, and you might see some words that look very, very familiar <laughs> to our implementation plan, because our implementation plan was built using MTSS as one of our major documents. So we're trying not to like we're, we're using what we were supposed to use. It's really what it amounts to. And so um, here at U32, um, there are a few things that would fit into a multi-tiered uh, approach. First is what's called Tier 1 instruction, and you'll see reference to that from time to time. Tier 1 instruction is the regular classroom instruction that a student receives. So it's, if you have a math class, it's your time in your math class. If it's your English class, it's your time in your English class. Um, very familiar, but it's the things that are done at really the first contact of instruction. Right? So that, that, that first time the teacher is teaching something, um, that's all tier one. We hope in tier one instruction that teachers have a wide range of tools, so things like project-based learning, Differentiated instruction is a word is is something that you'll hear about. So, how do teachers modify their approach to teaching so that all students can access it in that classroom? Um, when that doesn't help a student, a good tier one instruction doesn't really provide them with enough to learn what they need to learn. Then students might also be engaged in tier two, and tier two is in addition to the regular classroom. So we have some tier two um, instructional strategies like callback. Um, that's, a, that's probably our dominant tier two um, intervention. 
but it could also be things like our READ 180 program, our math strategies classes, other courses that we have that lengthen the amount of time that a student is exposed to a subject. And so we have things like math labs. So we have other classes that in, within the way that our schedule is designed now to help, um, help those students. How do we identify some of those students? Well, we have the screening tests, like the STAR 360, which you're going to see the data from. Um, but we also look at behavioral, um, you know, how are kids behaving, academics in their classes in terms of grades. So there are a lot of things that we look at to see, is the kid progressing at the right rate? Any questions on that? Because tier three, that third tier, typically move students into a more personalized, individualized instruction that is more special education um, based um, within our system. So if you think about it in terms of number of students, all students get tier one, a smaller, you know, it should be somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of students might receive tier two, and about five to 15 percent of students should receive tier three depending on the needs of your population. And so, so what was that last number? For tier five to 15 percent for, for tier three. And that really, that usually is around your um, percentage of students who are identified for special education services. Give or take a few percentage points. And so you, you can imagine we, we presented before about some of the things that we do in special education. We probably could present a lot more about what our special education program works uh, or it looks like. That's not going to be the purpose of this conversation. That's probably better held for another time. Um, but, uh, but our MTSS system, I would say, if we were just to grade us right now, is somewhere in the um, developing. Right, so using our proficiency terminology. So it's, it's in the developing phase. We need more interventions around some of the learning needs that our students have. Um, and, um, and we also need to have interventions around uh, behavioral needs that some of our students have. So are you saying more tier two, Stephen? I am saying more tier two. Um, and, and so that is something that we find as student, as we ask more of students in a proficiency system, so as we raise the standards, we have to come up with new ways to help students meet those standards if they um, need more time. And so time in a proficiency system is the variable. And so, uh, so we just, you'll see that time and time again as we talk about our needs as a school. All right? So now let's charge into the data. So we, in October, we gave uh, tests to our students and you, the criterion level one is the We'll have a slide in just a minute that actually has the breakdown, but one is the lower level and four is the higher level of performance. And so you see in the fall, this, were, this is all of the students in grades 7, 8, 9, and 10th, or all the students that took the test in 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th grade. So that's the percentage of students at each level. So wait, was it all the students? It, it, not every student took the test. Okay. So I, I didn't want to say it that way. But okay. of, of, the, of students, the students who took the test, which was the vast majority, Right? There's oh, only okay. a few students who did not complete the tests. This is the percentage of students in those four grade levels. In the winter, this was a January um, administration of the test. You can see the results and the change. Um, so you can see that we had a slight increase in our, um, in our overall scores. From, But it's slight. I mean, to be fair, it's very slight. But it's only a three-month window. <coughs> is the, are the fall and the winter assessment equivalent? Are they so that's aggressive? the other part of this. So the fall assessment and the winter assessment are based upon where the student should be in the fall and okay. in the winter. And so if there's an increase, that means they made a little more gains than um, would be expected in that time period. Um, so students who, we, we hope that all of our students are in the three and four level, but if a student at least maintained three level performance, then they were growing at the pace we would have expected them to grow. Tier two instruction is needed typically to help move a kid from a level two to a level three because they need more instruction during that time period to make that gain. A kid who stays in level three did what we expected, but by the same token, a kid who stayed in level two may have grown as much as we would have expected a normal kid to grow, 
but that's not catching them up. That's the achievement gap, right? Right, so that's kind of the definition of the achievement gap. So there's our fall and winter reading data. And then for the entire supervisor union, those um, the Roman numerals across the top are different schools. And these are percentages that are in there. Um, so we just don't have a percent sign with all this data. And so you can see um, how schools perform overall. And as a whole SU, you can see what percent of our students fall within each of those levels. Um, and this is, yeah, this, this is, is great. Falling. This is grade one through 10. Yeah, grade one assessment. So essentially, what we're saying is that 15% of our SU populations in grades one through 10 are at level one, which is below proficient in the fall, and 11% of the grades one through 10 are at the level one in the winter administration of that test. Is this a STAR 360? This is STAR 360 data. Bonus Pinal and DRA2. It's all in there. Yeah. All. Well, we don't, for, reading, for reading, yeah, for reading, it's all three of those. Yeah. So when it says all schools reading data, you, you put all that information yeah. together. Yeah, right? but at, uh, we do not do, what, the only test that we do at U32 right. is the STAR 360. Yeah. We do Bonus Pinal, just because Adrian, I know you're probably curious about we. Fosmanel kindergarten through uh, third grade, but we decided to take the kindergarten out of this because we don't start administering that to the winter, as it's recommended by Fonus and Pinnell. And the DRA two we do four through six, and we're doing Star three hundred and sixty now down to third or second grade in reading. We're actually taking a look at does this, and that's not in here. We didn't put the Star three hundred and sixty for the second through sixth grade because we're trying to see is that. A comparable right. assessment. Oh, well, okay. Give us so, the same flag. So the elementary schools, it's not a start to It's not, the, not in there. Not, not, they do it. They're doing it right now, but we're trying to see what what does the assessment profile look like for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to ask, mm -hmm. just because the numbers are screaming uh, yeah. at me. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly, we labeled it with numbers. I don't know. Did we so label it with numbers so that there would be we a lack of knowledge as to which yes. school we're looking yes. at? Yes. Although you should be able to pick us out of there. You should, you can go back and show you, you can figure out where they are. So if, if I do backspace and you see what are now. Oh, there we go. Okay. So so now it, it will be absolutely obvious which one we are in. Got it. Yes. <laughs> we can't hide ours in there. Right. Uh, not by not back to back. And that's a I mean it's a weighted average because there's different populations at each. Yeah. Yeah. So that average that that's a true uh, percentile range with the thinking of the number of kids at every school. Under the SU. Is that okay if I move on? So we have our math data from the fall. This is still the same uh, test, which is the STAR 360. And so you see our percentages there. We didn't have this data when we looked at, our, at the school fall. No, but we identified that. I know. Math. Of, this is now what we talked about the school quality is that we're using common, the Common Core norms and cut, cut blinds for STAR 360 instead of the normalized curve, which we've used before, and we said there was a big mismatch. Yeah. So this year, everything we're reporting to you is in alignment with Common Core. You're going to see that Oops. note in a minute. We showed you that note quickly. Yeah. But, that, Sorry. but this is all off the Common Core cut scores that align with what Common Core scoring should be. Yeah. But look at that growth. It's nominal. It's nominal, but this is a three-month test window, right? We're only looking at three months between when tests were administered. So growth is good, right? You know, so so remember, students are the if they are staying even within their band, they have grown the amount that they needed to grow in those three months, right? So so we show that we pulled some of our students up a band, which is is always good to see it within even that three months and so um, so there it's not as bleak as it looks when you see just small gains um, the good news is, is that the change was at the highest level so that means students were moving up in bands and then, then here's the the whole supervisory union and I'll give you a hint if you knew where you 32 was but the previous slide when these are up it's all in the same column <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
So the school one, it's the same school. Yes, yeah, school is two. Okay. They're all the same. I kept the schools the same. Yeah. Same Roman numerals. This really, I, I think, illustrates the challenge of E32 bringing in these students with vastly different. Yeah. So now I get my reveal in just a second. So, uh, any questions about what you're seeing up there? I know it's a lot of numbers. Yeah, so. No. Okay. We got a problem with that. So, so we saw average scores increase in all tested grades between test administrations. So we did see this. This was a nice piece. Anytime the average goes up, we're at least doing something. Um, and um, across years, the current eighth grade has consistently improved average scores since arrival at U32. This is something I need us to focus on because I want to jump to the next slide and talk about possible improvements. So here's what revealed itself as I looked at the data. If, when a student came from 6th grade to 7th grade, they took the test in um, June, late May or June, of the 6th grade year. Did we minister to all last year in June? I thought it was only January we did that. We have June scores for, oh, our, for our kids, okay. yeah. So, so, we, so they took, um, it was late May or early June, students in the elementary schools, 6th graders, took uh, the test. When they arrived at U32 in October, they took the test again. We saw a dip, both in our, in all kids, in the average, we saw a dip in their scores. In our free and reduced lunch kids, we saw, I don't want to say significant, but it was noticeable enough to say that this is a problem. So significant would imply a lot of statistical work that I did not do. Um, so, but you can see it, right? You know that it's there. The dip is very slight for our non-free and reduced lunch students, right? So it's not as significant. From that moment in our students, they improved their scores. So by January test administration, they were back to their original end of sixth grade year scores in average, on the averages. And then, um, and then it's continuing to improve. So by, I actually went back a year to look again. And um, we see the dip both in our eighth graders when they first came here we had the dip and as se the seventh graders this year we saw the dip so we are having a loss of learning that summer slide between elementary and u32 we do not see a significant summer slide once they're here so we saw from seventh to eighth grade they held pretty even in their scores from june to october and so um, <coughs> a, a very, very slight dip for our free and reduced lunch, the average on, on those students, but not enough to cause great concern, like less of a summer slide than you would, than you would expect almost. So the good news is, is that once they get here, we see steady increase. The bad news is, is the biggest transition in our supervisory union, the transition from sixth grade to seventh grade, learning backtracks. So we have to make up for a, a, a summer slide uh, during that time. So, um, so when you um, why would that be? Huh? Why would that be? Uh, why would it? Why would they slide back? So the transition is a big deal, right? Yeah. So, right. But I, I would say this: we can't give you the why without doing other data <coughs> analysis. All we're doing is looking at our screening data. Yeah. So we can only, we, I mean, I can think of many reasons. I can think of many reasons, curricular assessment and instruction reasons. But social emotion. I don't, yeah. we don't have the data to tell you to understand the why. Yeah. Just that it's happening. Just that it's happening yeah. is all we can tell you. Yep. And so, yeah, we see that something's happening. We, we probably have a hundred different reasons why because we have a hundred different kids that come, right? And so, so we need to, to look at that, tease it out a little bit more, look at other data, and really start to, to talk about. Um, so, so board supports, so we may need some type of summer transition programs from sixth to seventh grade. If that's where our problem lies, then that may be a place for us to put resources. Um, the other one, as you said, we need help in math. So, we, um, so our middle school teachers have actually been doing some work around what do we need um, to help our students uh, to improve in their math um, skills. Um, 
and we're working on a couple of options for that. But those are resource intensive, you know, they cost dollars. Um, and so uh, I did try to pull out a little bit of information as to how well our students were doing with reading. Um, because we have the Read 180 program, I need to actually look at a lot of different data on that. That was not really, it wasn't super evident here. I need to look more specifically at, at more individual students um, and, and try to pull that data out as to which ones were in Read 180 and what were, were their score improvements. And I just, my apologies, but I just didn't get to that level of, okay. of data. Um, but that's, um, it's kind of where we're at right now. I mean, you saw the, you saw we, we do show steady Although, I would say slow improvement um, while the student is here. I think that's a fair way to characterize what, what's happening at U32. Mm -hmm. So for the summer programs, mm -hmm. are you thinking this summer? <laughs> no. No, okay. No. No, we have summer, had, summer started today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I think that we need to be careful about some of the students yeah. that we identify for our um, so extended school year. If we jump, I'm just going to say this. We were talking about trauma earlier. If we jump too fast, we can make a miss move. Yeah. That will exacerbate other problems in the system. Mm -hmm. So we want to be thoughtful about that. And, and I think we just want to be clear about what is causing it before we yeah. say. That. I mean, there could be there, and that's why I give you that gamut. We don't know why. We really don't. Yeah. And there's no way. It's not worth going too fast without having a clear direction of why will probably cause more harm than doing nothing. So the good news is, is that we recover our scores um, by January. So when we see the dip, we do um, have the kids back to the end of sixth grade level by midway through to seventh grade. So, I mean, there, at least it does, I mean, it, I've seen summer slides that destroy the next school year. Um, and so, um, so I, I think that we recover moderately quickly. So sometime, sometime halfway through the year, we're, we're caught back up to where we were in terms of scores. It just holds us back. You know, it's that half. It's a half year loss. Yeah. And what happens during the spring? I, I know you don't know yet, but it, do, do we generally see the increases? So when we take our May May <laughs> results, we have another increase in our average. Um, and so we, we see growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the growth, once the growth starts at the beginning of seventh grade, um, we do not see another dip in our students. So you're going to make start 363 times a year mm -hmm. to all grade levels? Uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Yeah. And then we move into things like PSATs and, and, um, and all that in the 11th. So, thanks. Questions? <coughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Yeah. Order treat. Order, Order treat. treat. Well, well, we we're just to there. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We can move on. Okay. Um, maybe we should try for another date. Can I suggest that we had a conversation at the executive committee meeting um, that started last meeting uh, started here in April, and there was a brainstorm that came of we're going to try for an, Matt and I this week have to figure out some, a couple. We're going to put out a doodle poll in a couple days in August for having a supervisory union-wide retreat. But the thought came up that if boards wanted to do, if we did the first four to five hours in an SU, and then boards wanted to do, so everyone guaranteed one break day out. for all retreat, then break out and do their retreat for two to three hours or four hours, however long we wanted to go afterwards. I'm not saying it's the way you have to do it. Callus just the other night said we like it, but we want to get our retreat done sooner, so they're doing theirs in June. But um, it was an idea that was, the, and it, it and for some folks, they said, well, that might actually work. It's a little later than we'd like to have it, but trying to pull something together for August retreat for the SU, it was asked, actually, they talked about it. Could it be earlier, somewhere in June? And for what's being talked about for the retreat, there's not time to get the people to come in and help support us in the learning we want to have. It's time for learning, and it's really going to be around uh, – two different pieces and good cars come in right at the right time. So I'm kind of moving into the um, executive committee report, but um, there were two different themes that were being talked about. 
Great. So that might be Why don't we put that on the May 23rd agenda Okay. as a discussion Can do item and yep. figure out where to go from there once okay. you and Matt, so Matthew good. have... I just want to make sure so that I, I say the right thing to Leslie. Um, so we are going to be meeting here on May 23rd and not at your home right. for the retreat. I just and it's make not sure. going to be a retreat. It's going to be a Under, board meeting. A board meeting. That's fine. I just want to make sure because we've ordered food right. already, so I need to uh, get that changed. Uh, hold on. Otherwise, you're going to have a big meal that night. <laughs> hey, you know, that's okay. <laughs> we can come after, after the meeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you, because mm -hmm. she's so organized. Yes. Okay, so that'll be on May 23rd agenda. Yeah, we, I'll add that, yep. And we probably won't know much more because the executive committee's meeting on the 30th, but I, yeah. I was okay. trying to update them. On the goals? On, well, not on the goals, but on the retreat piece of the conversation we had there. Because oh. we were on the last item by retreat, should they just table, and then it said, should we talk about a date? And I said, well, let me tell you about some of the brainstorming that was happening. Right. So we can kind of think on it. Reports to the board. Central Vermont Career Center. You're not going to believe this, but um, the May 23rd, 22nd meeting at 4 o'clock, I will be out of town. So I had a conversation with John Pandolfo. We're not the only group that has issues of being there. <laughs> so there's a conversation starting among the five superintendents that are part of it about we need to find a better time to have this meeting. A later time. It, it, well, not necessarily a later Or a rotation. Time, or a different, or a rotation, or something different, because um, it's really been set. The RAD Just has certain purposes, and it isn't meeting all those purposes. So we're trying, I- That'd be great. I sent an email, John was more than willing to have that conversation. Okay. Good. So we're, I'm working on that, Karen, for you and George. Right. I haven't been, I just, it's on Tuesday nights, and you guys know my Tuesday nights I'm in class. Yep. Student report, we had administration. We got a report in here. Mm -hmm. Short one. But I, I think I can answer uh, Kari's question yep, now. Um, so um, one of the things that we've been doing during our hiring process is actually asking the question if you have the opportunity to teach a uh, class on any topic to a group of students, um, what would it be? And so um, we think through our hiring um, that we're going to be able to offer um, an additional STEM class offering to our students. It may just be one semester. We're still working that out. But um, it would be open to all students, not just the group that we're asking for chemistry, but to try to just provide another opportunity, um, more of a special topics kind of course for our students that would allow for some independent learning. Um, but certainly would have a focus and a theme for it. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. We don't have it specifically slated because we don't have every teacher hired yet, but we are close on that. Um, and so uh, that's our current option. Um, we don't have room in chemistry classes right now. That's one of the, the big problems is those classes are very full. Um, and we don't see that students have dropped those classes either. Have you hired a person who can teach the chemistry classes? Yeah. So, so we, yes, we do have the ability to teach our chemistry classes now, but we're still working on our physics. <laughs> so so we, we're, we're okay with that. And I know that part of the thought was that those kids would start to develop a four-year plan. Is that process So our, our school counselors have reached out to the families. Yeah. We have a really positive, my family had a really positive meeting with so we talked about this <clears throat> additional course, and we'll see. Um, I, I, I haven't heard from other parents how it went, but, but so, certainly that was. So I've, I've emailed contact with some of those parents who've asked those questions um, so that they know what we're kind of what I just told you, okay. is that we're, we're working on that option. And, and I'm sure you've heard from Michelle. She, I just heard from her the other night. She, um, she asked me via email uh, yesterday if. If, because uh, she can't be here tonight, if we could talk about this in June. Again, yeah. And by um, then, if, by then, by then we'll, we'll, have a we'll have, okay, that would be great. Um, I, we, have, we have to have a resolution by June. So okay. if a parent has curriculum questions, direct them to Jen with our arsenal, or? Well, that's a kind of gen general, um, but uh, 
curricular questions could start with the school and we can point you towards a, either a teacher or a department head depending okay. on what the question was. Uh, it's good to start with the TA mm -hmm. or your school counselor. That's always the best first doorway into the yeah. school. I would suggest that any time with any issue, whether it's curriculum or anything else, that you start at the lowest level. That's what your policy, you've told us in how we do communications with parents. Yeah. And that you should always start. So the first point I can tap for U32 is the TA. Mm -hmm. and, or the counselor. And I would say the school counselor, yes, depending, depending on the issue. Yeah, but depending on the issue. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm talking more in general. Yep. But that's where we should start. Absolutely. A uh, uh, quick question on the proficiency based. Um, is there any update on how the angst that was being experienced around this new system? Is it people getting more used to it, would you say? I would say that we're, yes, there's a greater familiarity. Um, we're actually putting together a better guide for it right now. So um, we've got two levels that we're, we're going to come out with by the end of the school year. We're committed to having a guide to our report card and our transcript because we want to mail both of those to all of our parents. Um, and then we're going to finish up the full guide over the summer um, so that in August um, we can send that out to people, which is really trying to show the roadmap of proficiency. So, And, and we are using an outside uh, person for this so that when we say things that make sense to us, <laughs> Um, he says that doesn't make any sense to anyone else and, and, and challenges us to think about, instead of using words like pedantic, um, we, we, yeah, as, as, a, as an example. Or CBL. Uh, or, or CBL. Right, so he, he challenges us the same way. Scott, I know, I feel your pain because when I sit with him, he's like, this doesn't make any sense what you're saying. I'm like, okay. So, so we're, you know, and it's just... Sometimes you're too close to the work, right? And um, and so for us, this has helped, and we should have a nice guide for um, project, uh, sorry, proficiency-based learning um, that will help our parents and our students as well. And and my student, the student advisory group that I have with me, looked it over and told me some things that did not look good in it um, as well. And so we took those back to the designer, and and we're saying, okay, we need to move some things around, or this doesn't make sense to the kids. So, you know, what's the point? And, and it's been helpful. Can we get a copy of that in our packet? Mm -hmm. when, when they're ready, yes. When it's ready, that's right. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I know absolutely. some people here are parents, but some and of us aren't. Just to follow up on that, it, we've heard some concerns about what are the implications for graduation. Yeah. And is that picture becoming any more clear? Or is it, when do we need to wrestle with it? I'm sorry, I missed sorry. that. The, we've heard um, earlier about concerns of um, um, the implications of proficiency-based um, graduation requirements for graduation. Sure. And is that, I'm wondering, is that becoming more clear now as we're getting closer to the first class? Yes, absolutely. Yes. And so one of the major goals of our departments to finish this year was clear criteria on what it meant to reach a graduation level proficiency. Mm -hmm. And so those criteria, we're, we've got those in some there are various forms right now because they're, they're kind of a work in progress, but their goal is for that to be included with, with our information as we, as we I mean, move forward. The big, I guess my big question is, are we heading towards a cliff that we need to address? No, I think that we know where the cliff is and we're going to avoid it. Um, so, uh, so that's there our... There is a cliff. The, yeah, there is a, there is a yeah, you're correct. Like there's, there's a communication issue around this that um, we think that much of the work that we're doing right now on these two documents is going to help address a lot of that. But we're also seeing, thank goodness, um, Infinite Campus, which is a, a major part of our communication, has just come out with some new tools that are, they're building tools now more towards what they're calling standards-based, but proficiency-based um, education, which will allow parents to see things in an easier way and allow students to see things, and teachers to see things in an easier way. And so, um, Jody also would- uh, I just wanted to throw in that on April 10th, I group of teachers from Spalding High School came and visited our ninth grade team to ask questions about proficiency. And after that meeting, the ninth grade team was like, wow, we're, we know a lot more about this than we, it was really good for them to have that, the discussion and to have those questions asked of them and be able to kind of talk it through yeah. and realize that they've done a lot more and they know a lot more than they thought they did. Confidence booster. Yeah. Yes. And are they way ahead of Spalding? In, in their perception from what was said, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this um, is, I, I want to go to Carter. It's a whole different take, though. I mean, I think we've come at it from different routes. Yeah, I want to address Kari's first question was, 
I think of, I get, I get the luxury of knowing four supervisor unions really well in my household. Um, and <laughs> one is a superintendent, so I know that's this one the best. Um, and talking with my colleagues who are superintendents, I hear some of the issues that are going on in other districts. I think we're doing rather well. Um, has it been bumpy? Yes. Is it going to continue to be bumpy? Yes. The better we communicate, the better that's going to get. Um, but we're also trying to come through a tradition of 120 years sure. of doing education one way. Yeah. So we're trying to move a huge piece here. Um, and I think it's the more that we can do the communication pieces that we're working on are going to help. Um, you know, Stephen's done a great job with when he's had, you know, principal coffees and teas and saying, you know, we've got to talk and get the students together and let them have input. Um, what I hear from my fellow college superintendents, we're not dealing with the issues that they are. And I think that's because Stephen and the team here all together have been just really proactive in getting that. You must see a difference at Harwood. Harwood, I actually, you don't, you're not there yet. Yeah, there's. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so we, uh, I, I will say this. So as an example, um, <coughs> he's at Randolph. Yeah. Oh. He's at Randolph Tech. So okay. I, I'm not seeing this stuff from Harwood because there's a huge. Yeah, I know. The I know whole climate is different. Yeah, yeah. Because of Washington bus professors. Yeah. Wow. Well, and I'm not sure whether it's the communication piece or the way they've rolled it out or the reporting piece, but there are a lot of parents really, really upset. Yeah. Well, I will say I, one of the references that I had to call on one of our our employees that we're we're going to put forward. I don't know that he's in this packet though, but yes, uh, he is. Yeah. I saw him the other day. He is. Okay, so I um, him as extra. It's coming from Colorado. So I was speaking with a principal out in Colorado, and somehow we got to the topic of they were a very project based oriented school, but they were having problems with how did they report that on their transcript, and so we ended up in this conversation about here's what we're doing in our transcript. And he's like, huh, um, so can, uh, here's my email address. Can you send that to me? So it's, great. it's great, though, to be able to communicate with somebody half, you know, halfway across the country and, and hear that what we're dealing with is what they're dealing with. You know, this is not, we're not, it's always good to know that you're kind of in the lane, right? You know, and, and so I felt good about that. But, I, you know, I also now have a contact in Colorado who is, a school that's been doing project-based learning for 13 years. So, yeah, I want to borrow stuff from him too. Um, so, so, so we're, we're we're finding these connections, and, and it makes you feel a lot better that others are struggling with the same communications uh, and being able to do that. So, I'm going to try to quicken this up one because we're getting late. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get shellfish about running back outside again. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. In the packet, I, we gave you a calendar that's similar to two years ago, color-coded. Is this the administrator's yeah. report? Or you're yeah, it's in the administrator's okay. report. It. It's on pages yeah. 9 and 10. Um, you'll see the only one that's not is negotiations of all the SU committees. And it has this year and next calendar year. So it has the, on page 9, it has everything through June. And then it has August through next June on there as well. It's very mm -hmm. useful. It's Call and we'll send it's you a call black and white, and it's really hard to tell the difference. So send, we'll send you a PDF, or you can say, send me an email, and we'll send you one in the mail. I, I want one in the mail because I don't have that, a call. That's all you need to do. Okay, I will do that. Yeah. Is there anyone that has like an iCal or Google so, Calendar? So the, once we have these all good, Karen, yeah. we've had this problem before, <laughs> then we start sending out appointments. But until I get everyone to say, we all set? And then when we're all set, then It'll Krista be starts, you'll start seeing emails come Perfect. from yeah, appointments she's, come from. she's really good about doing it. Okay, good. Yeah. But we want to make sure everyone, and it's six boards, we've got to get everyone to sign off. Like, are we all good with this? So are we all good for the U32 one? Mm -hmm. so I first will have the same, I mean, we picked our pattern previously, but I'll have the same issue missing, um, what color are we? Green. Hi. I will have to miss the first one of April and the first one of November. Okay. And no, did I say November? I did. Yeah. Bill? Yeah. In, in your contacts with uh, sister systems, um, I, I don't want to know any gory details, but if there are any useful lessons to be learned from the experience in Montpelier with the seeming 
uh, I guess, the non-renewal of Brian Rickard's contract, where there, um, if there are, um, as I say, lessons to be learned to, uh, to avoid any situation that might have led to what seems like an unfortunate development. Nothing that. Nothing I want to say in a public meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I gore, no gory details. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> you guys all set? Yeah. Finance committee. Well, there's a report That's in here. Um, that report. Yeah. There were a couple adjustments and to the good. Yeah. So we are well in excess of our four percent. Yeah, and Jim will be bringing you a recommendation for moving some of that uh, track e excess to uh, the capital funds. The, cap so the capital and for a couple specific of projects, a couple of little things, bank right? interventions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to see some specific pieces that we'll be recommending for the excess carry. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Um, although the um, food service one says Washington Central Food Service, but I. I think it's just U32. This is just U32. U32. Okay, it's just. It's in, it's in, it, yeah, it keeps that in the corner, and then you see U32 up top underneath the calendar dates for each. Oh, year. okay. So you have to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, executive committee. All right, so I'm sending around the board uh, draft goals. Okay, which um, are not as pressing right So if you now. remember um, the last carousel or SU board meeting, we had this process of uh, prioritizing what we wanted to work on the next year and we came up with board governance which was an, a, basically an exploration of policy governance and or other governance models um, then board monitoring um, and continuing the work of the school quality committee which has now become a SD committee and then community engagement um, and some learning and creating a plan around how we want to do engagement so this is the next iteration of that. Basically, we come up with some more specifics. Um, Matthew sort of basically drafted this. Um, and all the local boards are being asked to think about this, ponder. Um, we didn't get it in our packet, so I don't know how much discussion we can have um, really tonight. But the idea is that we would come back in at the June carousel meeting and sort of finalize this. And we could certainly talk about it on the May 23rd meeting yeah because we, we were agenda, we were going to do yeah, that that'd great. That'd tonight great. and we didn't really and essentially we're being asked to support these three goals and um then anything we we'll have have dates at that point for the 23rd meeting and what because matt just hadn't finished drafted taking the feedback from the executive committee on this right right um and i can just speak a little bit to the board monitoring goal because that was really sort of fuzzy uh until the School Quality Committee met last week, and I think we have a better handle on it. And what what we're really trying to emphasize you know, over the coming year is delving deeper into what the Student Learning Outcome Report or reports are telling us, and really wrestling with that information because there's a lot there, and it really goes to obviously our mission and what we're all about, and. <coughs> And then somehow translating that, those learnings, that, that findings into action, whether it's, um, you know, makes its way into the implementation plan or policy, um, but certainly budgets and then, Budget, and then yeah. communication as well. So we're still fleshing that out, but um, by the time we get to our next meeting, we'll have a little more detail on that. Um, Matt, Matthew described it as a uh, kind of a three-legged school where Goal one, we're talking about ourselves and how we operate. Goal two is going to be more about learning and what the students are, are getting. And then three is community engagement. So it kind of is elegant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the first part is just defining what people mean by community engagement. Because I think that we already saw with the six executive committee members there, there was a gamut. And two of them have been to um, Matt. I always have a hard time with his last name. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I, my hand, thank you. Probably did better than I could, Scott. <laughs> I, I, I have a really hard time with it. Um, but you know that you know one of the premises that comes from the public um, public I think it's act, it's not access it's public <coughs> agenda organization public agenda. That, work, that he works for. Yeah. But yeah, that he works for is that you don't do public engagement in open meeting law. Mm -hmm. 
I like, I like mm -hmm. that. You don't, you can't yeah. get it done. There are too many restrictions for the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and, and, and that's the same thing, that's the same thing <laughs> I've seen in my doctoral research. You don't do it open meeting law. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of... So you figure out other avenues. To avenues to ensure that it happens. Yeah. So can I throw out a Scottism? Um, <laughs> no. I think goal two is a misnomer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because um, board governance on goal one, obviously you're looking at the governance and operations of the board. Goal two, every time I read board monitoring, it sounds like you are monitoring the board's board. activities, mm. not the board monitoring the school <laughs> system's activities in the school. So I would recommend that that get changed to something like school system or effectiveness monitoring. Something else yeah. monitoring because Different it doesn't make sense. Board out of there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was discussion at the executive committee about both. Yeah. About mo mo the board. And I've asked this. Well, and that's where I was like, oh, yeah, we should monitor ourselves. But right. that, that's, that's not what's what this is. No, no, I, get, I, I, I agree, Karen, with what it says there for details. But I just wanted to let you know that discussion was happening around how do we self monitor ourselves and monitor the system? Which can go under operations. Yes, I, I operations, you set up the mechanism to monitor boards right. yeah. there, yeah. but then down here we need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Matthew was good about pointing out one of the pieces that he's not sure of with these goals is like, where is the students? Something. Where are the students? Yeah. I mean, that's and that's where number two, if you're going with. Well, it could be student, right. student outcome, we'll, student we'll, learning outcome monitoring. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Um, and two of these three goals we have had for years. Right. Yeah. Some right. iteration of We're them. We're familiar, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The board governance is a new one, but the other ones we've had. Thank you for that. Sure. Oh, uh, where are we here? Policy committee. Jonathan's not here. Did the policy committee meet? No, it's going to meet here in May. Okay. I don't have the date for that unless I get it to my calendar. I might try and email him, make sure he's going to be there. Um, action agenda, except end of year resignations. So we have two here, I think. Do you mm -hmm. have more? Or that's Three, I have a third one. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. I brought a lot of stuff with me that <laughs> we were doing because we wanted to get a lot into this meeting and I, I realized sitting here that I forgot one. Um, I'll let Stephen talk to this one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk to any, please. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. Um, so we have uh, three resignations. One of them is Laura Beeney, our um, teacher librarian. Um, she is moving to New Hampshire um, for a position there. We're in the process of filling that position. She was excellent to no end. I know. My my own daughter helped hire her. Uh, um, she was in one of the classes. Yeah, is she taught. moving for a family obligation? Or? Yes. Not cause seeking a better... There's <laughs> nothing better than you, 30. <laughs> so, so, um, so there's... Uh, no, she is not. This is this is due to personal reasons. Okay, um, okay. I just... Yeah. Yep. The, uh, the yeah, next one is years. Kit Walker, who is resigning point four of her mathematics position for... Uh, family reasons. Um, th this is something that we can accommodate right now. We actually, um, it allows us to hire a teacher who will also su help support our um, our alternative program that we've talked about. Um, yeah, that we keep pointing out there like that's where it is. But the alternative program that may, it will be housed in Shapiro, but um, that's why you keep pointing out there. Um, but uh, but it will allow us to combine up that that part of hers with some of the needs there. So um, so that that we can accommodate this request at this time with no uh, hardship to us. Um, but she's still going to be here, so that's good. But it's just point for that position. And then you also have in front of you a piece of paper that is um, from Andrew Conforti, who we hired last year as a special educator who is moving into an admi administrative, quasi-administrative position um, in the uh, um, middle area. Uh, Addison Central School District. There you go. The Addison Central School District. So, uh, Does he live over there? No, he lives in Chittenden County. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been mm -hmm. looking, I mean, he, he was very unpromised when he started yeah. last year. He's looking we felt like we stole him when we first got him. Um, he's been a wonderful addition to the team. We would love to have kept him longer, but his 
path and our path just they just don't match up right now. Mm -hmm. And so we would we send him on his way sadly. Um, there's another one in the packet that you don't need to take action on, but Linda, Linda Cueto has been here for years as a paraeducator, oh. so I want to make sure that Linda is informed that Linda is yes. retiring. Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't need to take action. On that. No, we thought so, it was we thought it was appropriate that you. Yeah, yeah you need to know she's yes. done a great she, job. She, she's been here for so long. Yeah, yeah. wonderful, wonderful um, is there service. A mission, I think. So a motion to accept the resignation of these three people. Did you get their names over there? Yes. <laughs> Scott, and a second. Carl, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Proposed. That motion carries. What about um, Denise Delmas and um, Steve, Steve Barrows? Barrows? Do we need to do anything with those? I, no, no, I don't think you need to take any action on them. We just wanted to let you know they've come back through retirement and done point four work and will be retiring. Before. So are they retiring or are we not? We're just not renewing updating. their one year contract. contract. It's, it's a one year contract. Because you have other people. So what we've done with this position, with these two positions and some other um, combination, um, we are going to um, have uh, Jen Ingersoll, who is an English teacher, is moving towards more of a reading specialist position, and so she will be filling this, more of this role. It just it allowed us to move things around in a way that we're going to be bringing in somebody who's getting additional training. So she hasn't received her reading specialist um, certificate yet, but she's working towards it, and so we felt like this was a good time to make a change where she's going to be focusing more on um, literacy, where Steve let's no you know no mistake about the talent that steve and denise both brought to our school but neither one of them was a trained reading specialist and and that literacy help is going to help our kids long term and so um it may not be the last we see of these two there's no if we can certainly call upon them if we need them for for uh, support <coughs> um i've handed you two more folks for hire and there's a third that I'm sorry I do not have the non forum for. We interviewed I interviewed yesterday, who is Dave Davis for an English position. He was out here from Colorado, and so we were doing a we did a thorough. We did followed our process, did a thorough, but I just didn't get his non forum. So if the board would like to wait, we could until June uh, until May 23rd, or um, you could add that. I do want to point out one that I just gave you, which is Brenna Lynch. Brenna is um, is applied. We're hiring two math teachers, as you see. Brenna is our teacher that will be math, but as you all know, Kate McCann is taking a one-year leave of absence. Mm -hmm. Brenna is also going to be working on her special education. So you see that I have it circled as permanent, and I thought the change was made before I opened my folder tonight. It should say a one-year contract, because we can't guarantee her it's like 99.9% .9 chance we'll have another position for her after the second year. She and I had that conversation, um, but it's not changed here on the non form. I'm confused because it says Stephen is taking Kate's. That's true. Yes. And Brenna is taking Kit's. Mm -hmm. uh oh. Uh, did, 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 did. It's actually the reverse. It's actually it's the reverse. It's just type yeah. 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 Um, so are you okay with that, us accepting that? I am okay with you accepting. Well, are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? So. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna write it here. Which is reversed? Uh, the the kid, kid and, and Kate. 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 Okay. Kate and Kate. So Steve. So Stephen. Okay. So Brenna. Steve. Would be Steve would be a permanent. Brenna most likely will be, but I can't offer that with the restrictions you've given us on the budget right now. Because Kate's coming back. Kate's coming back. Now, also, Brenna is working on her endorsement in special education, and we usually have special ed openings every year. And she and I had this conversation. I was very clear with her. She was willing to say, I get it. I'm willing to do it. We had that conversation actually yesterday. And uh, she has been an intern here in the school and has been tremendous with the kids. And it's not a question of her teaching ability, it's what we have for positions. How do people feel about the third one? The one that we don't have the I don't have the dollar form, but I can bring that in the 23rd. So does that, if we don't do it until the 23rd, does that slow down the contract, his, the contract for him? Yep. 
you know, generally I favor being more, um, I don't know, accommodating, but we have our process, so this is it. We look at these pieces of paper and we say, okay, you know, so. So is that going to, are you going to lose him possibly? No, because I, I, this is what I say to all for folks that are being hired from U32. So we have a great board, they entrust our hiring process, they know it very well. I, I say to them before they even sit, the first thing I say to them when they sit down is I say, I'm not going to be here to talk to you about knowledge and skills. I'm going to talk to you about values and beliefs that we have in Washington Central. And that's what I'm looking for. And I know that that's done already with the folks that are on the bottom of the paper that do all that work. Um, and I say that, you know, you don't need to come to the board meeting. We'll be presenting to the, we once in a while have a few questions about somebody, but it's never, um, you, you, you have shown us a lot of trust to Stephen and I in the process that we have here. Um, but I also want to want to say that we lose your trust when we don't show you the process, or you, even I have a, a box that's checked wrong. You know, when I sit down here at the table, that doesn't help you ensure that you know it's always being done right. So if it's not a throw, I would recommend you. Okay, I, that's fine. Okay. So then so I would, we'll bring that. And I'll make sure we have a conversation with him to understand what. what okay. Yeah. Yep. So I totally just wanted to ask. How many are we looking at? Here? Five. 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 Yeah. So I would move that we accept all five of these nominations with the change as described to Brennan Lynch's. Well, it's Brennan Lynch and Stephen Usikoff. And there was also... That, 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 there was a switch in who they're replacing. Yes. Oh, and would Brennan be, had it. It's a one-year, it's not a one-year non-renewable, it's the a one-year. Yeah, that's the important. That's the important change. So is there a spot for one year? It, it says one year nine. I almost want to change this form, but yeah, it's the form we've had for mm -hmm. ages. So it should be one year. Yeah. Okay. Do you want those names, or do you have them on? Okay. okay. Um, is there a second for that motion? Second. Any other discussion? These look like great people. So, so can I just offer one thing so that you kind of know just a slight bit? There's a, just so you know, Brennan. Stephen, Jeffrey, all student interns here at U32. Right. Oh, so, um, so these are these are three of your five are people that have started their career in learning how to teach here at U32 and proven themselves on par to do what we asked them yes. to do. Yeah. I mean, so when you think about the investment that we make in teachers initially. The investment that that the universities make in us to train these teachers is paying off as well. And, and they know what they're getting into. Correct. Yeah. And we know what we're getting into. Yeah. 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 yeah it's great. Does the future of Mark Chaplin and Kathy Top? <laughs> That's exactly right. Or Could be. <laughs> or Stephen Barron. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> that motion carries. Thank you. Um, the non bargaining contract. I don't know why that's on there. That's an old leftover. Okay. Because you never approved non-bargaining. Oh, yes, yes, sorry, sorry. No, those are the, those these, are are the these, ones, guys. Yeah, these guys. Yeah, these guys. I'd like, like to work. I always think yeah. it's no, the... No, I can't be leaving. I can't be going. Yeah. Thank you. So, yes. So here's my recommendation, but we would like to have a quick executive session about one of the non-bargaining folks. Um, but my recommendation is for all of those that work in equivalent ESP or supervised directly ESP people that they're... Um, they get the same as the ESP contract for next year, which is 3.5%. For the administrators that supervise teachers, that they get 2.6%, which is the same as the teachers. And that's my recommendation, but we would like to talk to you about one person in executive session. Thank you for stopping me. That was too rushing for my daughter. It's okay. Um, so maybe we should do that and then make a motion when we come out of executive session. That would be session. great, and this will be short. I okay. Hope. Okay, Stephen in here. Sure. You want Stephen to accept the non-bargaining, the recommendation of the administration for the non-bargaining contracts for 2018-19 school year? That moved. Second. Karen and Scott, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. So it's four. For it and one opposed, and that motion still carries. And a motion to approve Wait, the board order. Sorry, sorry. Who, made, who made the motion? Second. Karen did. Karen. And Scott seconded. Thank you. Sorry.
Um, a motion for the board orders? Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion for the board orders. And will you give um, most of the amount? Do you have uh, it is 112,000 and 4 cents. You get that? Yes, ma'am. Um, a second to that? Second. Karen? Questions? I had a couple small questions. Um, where did I move my papers around? There we go. <laughs> I know what the Kennedy Center and the Smithsonian are. What is Zava Zone? Zava Zone is the fun place that the kids go. I don't remember if this is the trampoline one. Yeah, or, it is. Yeah. It's trampoline. It's trampoline. trampoline. <laughs> There's like a ropes course. Burn off yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And, and pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right burn, off, burn off energy. And on this, there's a capstone line item. Yeah. Advanced placement pro serve rec burn. $2,300. Do we pay for the advanced placement exams that, that's for students? That's the advanced placement exams that we pay for. And that goes through capstone? Oh. It's, probably, capstone. it's um, probably a different capstone, not very. Yeah, it's not a very capstone. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm it on just says capstone right. community action. Yeah, I didn't know there were other capstones. So let's, we'll look right. at that because that does not look right. Oh, no way. That yeah. can't be capstone community action. Okay. It's got to be something else. So I'm it can't be AP board, test so. with that. Yeah. So it's either something we want to catch that one. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Um, and this has nothing to do with the budget, really, but spring sports. How's the baseball field? <laughs> well, it was covered in snow on Monday. I know uh, that. But it, 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 do we expect that the baseball field is going to have as rough a year as it did last year still? Or it, it really, it, it's weather dependent. So okay. it's, we're, we're waiting to see. <laughs> I just want to know if people are going to suddenly pounce on it. So we're, we're waiting to see if it dries <laughs> out. You know, we, made, we tried to make some improvements to it. You know, when it snows on it, four and a half inches. I talked to Hank about this on the way in, and he said, uh, if it still has standing water on it, but but so do so many fields. Yeah, all of our fields are not alone in that. He's, he's confident that. that we've made some improvements, but it won't translate to anything until kids are playing on it. Yeah. So he just doesn't know when that's right. Going. And so uh, so a windy, warm day, yay! Yeah, yeah. But then it rained. Yeah. And now it's going to rain again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, all of our fields are. We, we had ducks on the uh, lacrosse field yeah. yesterday. <laughs> like, like it was, they were just sitting in a puddle. Last call. Last call. Uh, oh, I'm going to take some for my husband. Oh, yeah. One for my husband. Yeah. 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 Is there a, um, yeah. all those in favor of the board orders? Who gets that? You All right. Uh, All right. Thanks, Thanks Pass. Cover. What's the next thing? Future agenda items. Future agenda items. Yeah. yeah, we've got those done. Cookie run. Look at you people. There's <laughs> 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 10 seconds to grab cookies. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 This is definitely the longest board game. I know. <laughs> it's been very long. I thought we were going to be done at 8. Everyone got the cookies they need? We're done. Um, board communication. Um, front porch forum. Kari and I have done it recently. I did last one. Well, why don't we wait until after the next? <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, I was okay, say, we'll do that. And adjournment. And at 9 o'clock. You're, are you following up on the legal stuff? Oh. And you, yeah. and yeah. you guys yeah. are going to yeah. get Can we make the first time? crack at it and send you some that ball? Yeah, that sounds beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> There you go. That's easy. Thank you very much, guys. Sorry it was so long.